and we're live. Hello, everyone. Oh, wait. I should bring the volume down on my iPad. Hello. All right, desktop audio might be a little loud. Let's bring that down a little bit. Hello, everyone. So I imagine there's going to be quite the number of people that I already know, but also a fair number of people that I do not know. So welcome to the stream. Yo, two nerdy nerds. So cool to see you here. Jitspo, hello. Good old friends. That's fantastic. That is fantastic. Um, I'll just need confirmation about the audio levels. Can you hear the music in the background? And if you can, that's good, I think. Audio is good, no music. Seems good to me, it's perfect. Okay. <laughs> ah, right, I see, I see. So I'll need to do a couple of things. So let me just bring the volume down here. That's counterintuitive, isn't it? But let's bring it up over here so that we get full volume, but not that loud. So how about now? in comparison to my voice. I hope that works. Also, Twitch chat. Ah, yeah, okay. Okay, great, good, good. Oh, you have no idea how much that warms my heart when I read those messages. <laughs> All right. Okay, peeps, so I've got... Yeah, sounds good with a little music, dig it. Awesome, fantastic. All right, so, hi, I'm Christoph. For anyone who does not know me, I am a game developer and I use Godot. Structed. Uh, yeah, sounds good. With it. The main thing is you and your boy. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> That's what well, I, I, I suppose I'll be talking a lot, so I suppose that works well. Game developer design programming art, math cookies. Yeah, right. Okay, so that's me. I do all sorts of things. Uh, we've got a little studio that we founded about four years ago. Lots of things happened, but uh, this is our second project. Our first game that we released also with uh, Godot, but that was Godot 3.5, was Cardbob. So if we check out Cardbob on Steam... Um, Godot, no way, I hear that is a fantastic game engine. <laughs> I've heard of it as well. <laughs> right. Um, Kaveira, I didn't know this was going to be an a ASMR stream. Well. You know, I, I wasn't planning on it being an ASMR stream, but here we are. Well, here we are. So I suppose that's good. <laughs> so our first game that we released was uh, Cardbob over here. If you search for Cardbob on, on uh, Steam, you'll definitely find it. And it was an action roguelike where you do all sorts of things, but mainly fight. And then you can also haggle, um, haggle for uh, selling your items at a high price, and then you progress permanently. So I think that's good. Well, let me bring down the volume on my end a little bit. Right, so yeah, so that was our first game, and now we're working on our uh, second commercial game. Let me show you that game right away, because I think it's rather... rather good. But we'll see, I'll let you judge. You know, what, what sort of a developer would say, oh no, yeah, my game, mm, crap. No, <laughs> I actually really like my game. Let's make it full screen. Here we go. And also, let's bring down the music because we've got the music in the background. So, music. You see the amount of sliders that we have for music? I mean, sure, the... Oh, wait. That's... That's card, Bob. Oh, no. Here we go. Okay. Let's close that up. All right. Um, and let's run this again. Slider heaven. Yeah. This is... This is slider heaven. If, if, if you're looking for something and you need a slider you'll feel right at home given this options menu. It's one of the things that we'll be doing today, which is adding extra tabs so that we can categorize this little screen a little bit better, but okay. Anyways, right, uh, if you also do um, exclamation mark project, there's a, there's a newsletter that you can subscribe to because we do not have a Steam page yet. I know, yeah, it, it, it's just not, not quite there, not, not, not just yet. Right. So, uh, this is Fog Piercer. Fog Piercer is a, is a game where you, um, you control a train, you build the train, and then you upgrade your train. And it's also a, a, a roguelike deck builder. Um, so, for example, right, in carriages, these are the train cars that you can, that you can get. Um, and each car has its own specific set of cards. 
uh, over here. The first one you always get for free instantly. And then you have to upgrade your train cars to be able to get one of these. Uh, you can only upgrade each train car twice, which means that each run you only get to assemble uh, 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 a new version of that train car uh, where you get two of these four cards, and that's random. Um, uh, hello everyone, Woland, and also Polynomi. Uh, I'm curious, what made you choose FMOD over Godot's built-in? Right, so with FMOD, what made us choose it was our, our audio guy, he's a composer and a sound engineer as well, uh, the music you hear in the background now, he composed that, was the incredible amount of freedom in how we can assemble the music in the game, right? So there's parameters in the game, but yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you about them when we get there. Wait, I might forget. So for, in, for instance, the music changes in an adaptive way to the things that are happening in the game. So for example, if um, it's your turn or enemy turn, this is a turn-based game, um, so when it's your turn or your enemy's turn, it's, it sounds a little different. Uh, low health, it sounds a little different. And the transitions are designed in FMOD, and there's a lot of freedom and control um, that uh, our sound engineer had. So we, we decided to go with FMOD. Right, okay, so, <clears throat> game. Right, so this is a roguelike deck builder, you build your train to build your deck, well, uh, and you, th this is a snowy world, but we do plan on adding other worlds as well. Um, I can choose, can I choose one more carriage? No, I can choose a different one. So let's go with artillery. Right, so when you click on one of these carriages, what a beard, paints in the dream, thank you. <laughs> I actually recently trimmed the sides because they were going, it was going everywhere. So I just trimmed the sides and now I feel like there's something missing, you know. But anyways, when you click on a carriage, let me close that one, when you click on a carriage, the camera zooms in, and you can see the details of this carriage. So I can see that there are four cards, which I have not activated yet. There's one card that I already have. If I choose to level up... Oh no, that's wrong. This shouldn't be like that. Why, why is it all stretched out? But <laughs> usually this works, obviously. No bugs in this game. Um, so if we choose Incendiary Blast, these are the two cards I can choose from. And if I choose Incendiary Blast... It gets added to my deck, and this is how you build your deck, right? So now I know that from this carriage, I'm getting these two cards. And then um, I could do the same here. However, the passenger uh, carriage car uh, has no cards, but it does have a synergy card. And then there's also uh, also the locomotive. Locomotive is a thing that you can upgrade four times, not just twice. Um, but it's more about the, the it, it gives you more more play styles that you can explore. Um, then there's also an overview UI for your train. So I know that I've got the locomotive and these cards. I've got the, the passenger. And there's also my artillery. And there's also a driver. The driver is giving me two cards, which is hand throw and, and temporal shift. And, it, and he's also giving me a module. Uh, the module is like a permanent upgrade that stays with you throughout your run. And you can pick up new ones too. Um, do you get better, so Jitspo says, do you get better at this game if you train a lot? <laughs> well, depends on how hard you train, of course. <laughs> right, and then there's also your, your overall deck overview, right? So I know that all of these cards are in my deck. That's all, that's all I know about it. So yeah, good stuff. And what else do we have here? Right, so now let's go into a fight. When you click start, you get an overview of the map. This is the good old um, a road, a roguelike map that, that everyone is pretty much used to these days. You can only go forward, you can't go back. And here, there's a little bit of a, of a red exclamation mark. So um, that's a negative module. Th th that makes the boss fight a little bit harder because you start each round with one less AP. Right, now apart from that, there's fights, convoy fights, there are depots, uh, chop shops, and that is basically it. Ah, right, there's also a, you know, chop shop, I already said that. So, a low variety, but all of them matter, right, they're all important. And then also in the top left corner, as you can see over there, uh, there is information regarding whatever you've just hovered. Okay, off we go into a fight. Right, negotiate. Just put only if you stay on rail. 
Nice. <laughs> right, and this is the game. At the moment, um, I'm experimenting with a larger grid. The game usually has a smaller grid, but I'm experimenting with a larger version of it. Um, so I'm pretty sure that we'll play this that a little bit on this stream as well. Right, now, the magic of the game is within the fact that... So it's turn-based. The enemies move. If, if anyone's ever played Into the Breach, the combat system is heavily inspired by it, which means that the enemies move. Once they move, they set up their attack that they plan to do, and then it's your turn. And within your turn, you can make all sorts of tactical decisions that can offset what the final thing that the enemies are going to do is, right? So for example here, I have artillery attack card. Um, the grid tries to do as much visualizing as possible to tell me what's going to happen. So for example here, I can see that if I shoot here, nothing happens because I can't, that's not within my range. If I shoot here, the only thing I'll do is move the enemy back by one. If I shoot here, I move the enemy into my train car, which deals damage to both the enemy and one of my cars, which I'm not particularly happy about. But what I can do as well, check this out, I can move one forward, shoot here, and now they attack one another. Oh, this is so good, so good. Uh, this happen, whenever this happens, it just feels awesome. It just feels awesome to have that happen. Wait, we can't see too much overlay. Oh no. What, what, what do you mean? It needs to be moved to the side, I think. Oh, what overlay? The chat overlay. Oh yeah. Okay. Oh wait, okay. Let's get into the settings. I have always on top. Let's turn that off. Uh, the chat overlay, right? It's overlay large. Development back on track. Yeah, development's been going on for a while. Um, okay, so let's make this one smaller. And the chat, I think we can, we can move the chat a little bit higher. Like, there maybe? It's a Twitch overlay, right, right, the notifications. Okay, 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 okay. I'll move them there for now and let me know if that's good. <laughs> right, yeah, so um, I used to stream fairly actively and... Um, um, yeah, let me know if the overlay is better now. Um, and uh, we've been working on the game, you know, constantly, basically almost every day. Um, but, but, but yeah, it's just, a, it's just the streaming that's been taking a hit. Anyways. Ooh, right, I see. Wait, so that's the overlay notifications. And we can just push them in there, I think. Right, because we do have a lot of space around there. So, again, new place, looking good. Okay. Um, just paint the score. Okay. All right. So we have that. Now, when we end the turn, that's when the enemies will start doing things. Um, I do have another artillery attack, but it's not something I want to do now because there isn't anything. Oh, wait. Maybe I can. If I shoot here, they both lose one. Okay. Good. They both lose one health point, and we can end the turn. And this is when they attack one another. Yes. All right. So they moved away again. Um, uh, Quantum, the overlay being in the center and so large truly seems like a great idea. Well, what can I say? A genius move is a genius move. <laughs> right, and there's also incendiary blast. That's very good, but they have too little health. I could move by one, two, three. Could I move by one? One. So move, I, I, I can move the train as well, right? But the cost goes up ex... Oh, no. Okay, wait. Add AP. All right. You see, because um, in this convoy fight, the thing is, I have to destroy this van first before destroying them. Otherwise, otherwise, I lose the ability to monopolize on the module coming from this van, but I don't think that's going to work out. Anyways, let's move on. Why does the white line go from the car and not from your train? I think that's because of... So, that's an interesting question because I haven't actually thought about that at all. Um, you are using the card, and so the card is being applied on there. Um, and it's not going from the train. Hmm. I wonder whether that's a good idea. Because this is also a UX that's very heavily used in, um, in deck-building roguelikes, and also in deck-building roguelikes that are on a grid. 
So the thing is, if I did change it, maybe I'd be going against what people are already used to. And I do know that some players can be fairly specific about tech building UI. Right. Now, we destroy that enemy. The van leaves. I think I saw this on Reddit. Yeah, there was a post on Reddit about this quite a while ago. Um, Woland, I feel like I'm going to sink many precious, man, uh, many man precious hours of my life into this game. Oh God, I, I, I hope I hope you survive and live well afterwards as well. <laughs> we can receive an upgrade point. Move on. Next station is a depot. Right, uh, Dust Bunch. Are the cards no 2D? If so, how does it how does it know to only select one and not both when they intersect? They are not Note 2Ds, they are Note 3Ds. So let me actually show you, show you something interesting. All right, let's repair a train. We can choose a mission. I'm just going to choose a mission to destroy 10 enemies. Okay, move my train. And I can buy this wagon over here, this carriage. I have 260 and it costs 280. By buying an extra wagon, I can move that over there, for example, and also upgrade it. Battle repairs, repair a train car for one. That's very good. Add zero shield, amount increases each turn. Hmm. Not sure about that. Let's go with repair. Repair is always super useful. Right. All right, now we can move the train forward and off we go. Fight. Right. Um, uh, dust Punch, other cards. No, yeah, so the cards are no 3D, right? They're all. They're all, they've got a custom shader on them. It's basically a 3D model. And yeah, yeah, so it's just a 3D model. Nice. And there's something super, super cool that I want to show you all, right? So, um, so if we've got the cards down here, right? So those are, uh, those are actual meshes, actual models. I designed them in Blender and I'm, and I'm running a shader through them that just applies different colors. Um, but there's this super cool thing, command, that I've got called the dev cam. And with the dev cam, we get this. We can just fly around the game, right? And you can see how the, how the cards are constructed. They just float about, uh, they just float about in space. And this is how they work and then how they look, right? <laughs> yeah. Oh, that is so cool. And also, right, so this is the game. And then right over here, this is where the map is. It's all in one. <laughs> it's all in one scene. I love this. Ah, uh, it's so straightforward, right? So, so if we zoom out enough, this is the game. And the reason that the props aren't disappearing at the moment, super simple. They disappear when they leave the camera view. So as soon as the camera leaves and looks at them, that's when they start disappearing. And that over there is a station. <laughs> it's just, when you come to a station, the station just sort of gets brought into your field of vision. Um, yeah, why would you use too many scenes? Exactly. Um, also, someone asked a question about whether I use just one big script or, or split them up evenly. It really depends. Some scripts are longer, but I do try to put things into logical compartments whenever I can. So, for example, the script for the map generation, the one that there's a random walker pattern, um, that that designs the map yeah I, I do it's it's a hefty script but at the same time the script for the uh, prepared attack visualization that's completely its own thing and the enemy just calls that one so yeah okay all right so we can move oh no wait let's go back right incendiary blast awesome on fire now next uh, next turn, they get uh, they get one one point of damage, and I can't do anything else. Um, that was silly of me to move at the beginning, so let's just apply shield on this one. Awesome. Okay, and end the turn. Right, dust punch. Let's take a look at this. Okay, so how does it know to stop the mouse pass through? Uh, does it do some x index calculation? The way I do this type of stuff is is give some value to the index and only select one, but it doesn't seem elegant. So. What, what I'm using is uh, colliders, right? So, so this is an area 3D with a collider. This is an area 3D with a collider. And that collider, I think, does it grow? No, it doesn't, right? So it's just a collider, right? And the moment the mouse hovers over it, it brings the 3D object a little bit closer to the camera. You can also see that here. 
um, if we do this, right? It brings the card closer to the camera, um, which means that there is no issue with the sorting because it's closer to the camera. So, so it, it takes care of that complexity instantly by itself. Um, yeah, and that's, and that's basically it. It's, it's very straightforward, actually. Right, what do we do? What do we do here? I think, oh no, that, that would make me lose that one, wouldn't it? Yeah, it would, but what, um, hmm. Okay, I can move this one. No! Okay, and this is how the game ends. <laughs> the locomotive gets destroyed, and once you get the locomotive destroyed, you know, okay, you lose. Um, yeah. Also, uh, Fox Fox 900, you say that you love the idea of a console for debug commands in game. I completely agree. So, uh, this uh, console is is based off of uh, Jitspo's console plugin that you can get on the asset library. Um, and there's also right. So, so yeah, and it's based off of that. What I added is each command um, that's been registered gets its own little button over here, and the commands that do not need any parameters can be clicked and activated right away. So all of these commands are all of the commands that, that the console has registered. So yeah, so that's that. Right, so we can quit it. Yeah, Jitsbo, fantastic stuff on that one, by the way. And thank you so much for making the plugin. It's awesome. On the library, and if we search for console, it's probably going to pop up right away. Let's see. Jitsbo, developer, developer console, here we go. Developer console uh, made by Jitsbo. Really cool stuff. Really cool stuff. Um, yeah. Um, Woland, so how do you manage the enemy AI? Do you do like into the breach and give each tile a value? Sort of. The AI has been reworked very recently. And you see, we have a bit of a different situation contrary to breach, uh, to into the breach, because into the breach had pre-designed levels. And, and there was a little bit of random, but, but mainly it was just that. Uh, in our situation, it's a little different because we're randomizing the positions of the enemies each turn as well. Um, so there's a bit more luck involved, but there's also skill in terms of how well you prepare your deck for the various situations that can that can happen. And Pixter, <laughs> yo Pixter, welcome to the stream. So good to see you here. Ah, right. Um, and yeah, so we do a fair amount of. Um, I need so the the enemy AI is actually very straightforward. Uh, I don't think we do any sort of uh, any sort of um, giving giving indexes to cells, but it's more it's more straightforward from the position of I need to get to the train. There's this there's this one train car that I would love to attack. How do I get there? Um, they move there within their pattern that they could be getting that where they can be moving, and once they've done that. Um, they check whether there's anything that they can attack. And if they can, they do. Pixter was kidding, of course. I know this great dude. <laughs> yeah, we go way back. I actually have no idea how long we've known each other, Pixter. Uh, a couple of years now, right? A couple of years now. I think. I think. <laughs> right. Ganga, is Carnival going to make a cameo in Fuckface? Yeah, so we plan on having um, on having uh, a mission where you have to deliver cargo, and the cargo is going to be made up of cardboard boxes, and sort of making that homage a little bit, right? So um, some of those cardboard boxes would look a little bit like something that's recognizable from Cardbob. Hopefully that works out, and hopefully it works out well. Right, Woland. So there are no impossible to solve situations with the AI. Do you check for that? We do not check for them yet. Uh, we tested a lot, but of course our testing is limited. But there are no checks being done for that now. Uh, so far, we've decided to go ahead and implement it this way. And the moment we find out that there's an issue with it, design issue like the one you just mentioned, is the moment we go back in and make sure that it could work. So yeah. Right. Obsidian. So now that everyone knows what the game is, <laughs> let's move on to here. Right. Uh, y y yeah. Okay. Uh, Carbob is just an awesome name. Well, I, 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 I agree. I agree. I agree. You know, there was a bit of, um, there was a bit of an issue with Carbob. If I may, if I may show that on here, I think, I think I can. It shouldn't be an issue. Right. So Carbob by itself, uh, originally was called Carbob Revival, but we kept on getting asked whether 
it's a continuation of a game, whether it's the second version of a game. <laughs> so yeah, so then we decided to remind, uh, to rename it just to Card Bob, and that was and that was pretty cool. Um, also, as you can see here, I've got I've got this plugin for Steam that shows me estimated net revenue one thousand eight hundred and thirty uh, in US dollars, and that's actually not that far off. I mean, depends on whether we're talking before taxes or after taxes. But um, after taxes, I think that's pretty close, you know? I think that's pretty close. Cool, cool. It's really cool to see how these things that... Because it's an estimate, right? So they work off of numbers that are probably true, but not completely. So it's really cool to see how they often do get it right. That's nice. That's nice. Right. Final little roguelite. Ah, oh, Guyanga, thank you so much. Doing my work for me. That's awesome. I really... <laughs> it's always, it's always got difficult to get out in there. Dust Punch. Does Godot run smoothly on Windows 11? I'm trying to delay updating as long as possible. Well, I've been using Godot 4.2.2 stable for a fairly long time now. Months, right? And I don't think the engine has crashed on me a single time. Maybe once. Maybe twice. But that's about as much as it could have. Um, because, it, yeah, it works really well, actually. I'm surprised. It works really well on Linux as well. Um, I, I, I dual boot, and I really enjoy Linux. I don't know what it is about, about Linux, but whenever I hit F5 to just turn the game on, like this, right? Just whenever I did that. Um, that is so much faster on Linux. And I just don't know why. Got those final Windows 11, that's reassuring. There is a mo very little systemic difference between Windows 10 and 11. Right, right, right. It kind of makes sense. Right, okay. So, um, what I want to do, I think I'll start with is God mode. No, 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 no. right. We, we add an accessibility section in the settings, right? So here, we've got uh, settings general and settings controls, right? So, let's duplicate general and call this accessibility yeah, hopefully that works right and that's going to be set accessibility i might i might need to make that a little bit wider by the way uh text behavior center trim nothing right click text interesting oh it just doesn't have enough space does it yeah it probably doesn't right so if we just make that wider no Is this because of just... Right, it's just because of the size. Why doesn't it go bigger? Hmm. Weird. Um, it probably just doesn't. Anyways, can you turn up the volume a bit, or is it just me? Pixter, uh, volume of the microphone or volume of the audio in the background? Let, let me know. Um, not expand it. No, yeah, it is. Uh, I don't use the .NET version. Um, OX5A5A. <laughs> I, I just use uh, GD script. We sort of, we made a decision in our tiny little studio where there's mainly me programming, but sometimes other people as well, that we're going to use just GD script. And then if need be, we'll either decide to go either for C sharp um, or C++ in a way when we really need performance. But we just, we have never really hit that barrier, the performance barrier yet. Um, in container sizing. Yeah, no, it is expanding. Definitely expanding. Right here, right? Um, yeah, horizontal, it just fills it. You can also see it. Yeah, it, it is expanded. But no worries. I'll worry about that later on. I think I also need to create the logic for all this, right? So, there isn't much going on, which is good, because all of the logic for setting the settings is within these items. Uh, the only disadvantage of this system is that I can't see those there. I mean, I know I, I, I could make it into a tool script, but I just don't feel like it. I kind of enjoy when it's just there in-game, and then here I go by the naming of the nodes to know what's going on. Right. Okay. So we need to export the um, menu hbox. And that's an hbox container. Nice. All right. Okay. Yeah, GD script C++ for me too. Oh, that's really cool, by the way. I, I have no experience with it so far. How is it? How does that? How well does it work? 
do tell. Uh, Fox Fox, Foxy Fox 909. Uh, we love GD Script. I completely agree. I mean, GD Script is great, right? You can do some really cool stuff with it. Uh, Pixter. Every, everything, really? I don't think I can, Pixter, because check this out, right? So my microphone is maxed out. I theoretically could give it a bit of a gain, but uh, unfortunately, I don't, I, don't, I, don't think, I don't think that would work well if I just artificially bumped it higher. I do have a, wait, I do have a hardware, well, um, an external audio card um, interface. So, audio interface. So maybe I could boost it there. Let's give that a go. But but you... Sound sound is good. Yeah, all right. Well, <laughs> well, audio is one of those super tricky things, by the way. Everyone's got a bit of a different setup. Everyone's used to a bit of a different level. Um, yeah. Anyways. All right. Um, yeah, but if... Should that be an issue, just let me know a couple more times and I'll be sure to try and tweak it. Right, so now what? Speak in caps. <laughs> coding Grey. Also, Coding Grey, hello. I don't think I've said hello to you. Welcome. So cool to have you here. Just about Twitch defaults the volume to 50% for some reason, so make sure that's up. Ah, I didn't know that was a thing. Weird. Uh, good to see you, my friend. Code, coding Grey. Oh no, Ollie Boy. Ollie Boy, oh hey, hello. It's been, it's really been a while. It's really been a, a, a good while. All right, now then, let's grab everything. So I, which is a button in menu hbox, we connect. Um, we connect it to a function pressed. Um, we connect it, no, not pressed. I think it's toggle, isn't it? So this is a toggle mode pressed, toggled, right, toggled. And we want to connect toggled to pressed should work. Let's just try it with pressed. To um, switch view. And we bind i dot get index. Right, so we get the index of the button. And then we create switch view. And we call this which, which is an integer. Right, and with this, we just need the views parent, right? Scroll view container, I believe that's this one, right? Yes, so right, var active view integer zero, and now we get a scroll view container, get child, um, active view, and we hide it, and then the same thing, we get child which is which, and we show it. And then active view becomes which. All right. Now then, um, oh boy, Yagik, when is your takeover? Cool. Um, and a hearty ahoy to you also. Ahoy always messes me up. Because, <laughs> because in the Czech Republic, we say ahoy. And then um, from the moment I learned that pirates, uh, or, you know, uh, the, 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 the people that used to, you know, not, not pirates, captains, right? This used to be within their vocabulary and probably still is. I always get, I always get weirded out. I'm like, why do, why do they also use this in Slavic languages when the C wasn't very, um, a, a very important element there at all? So yeah, uh, is hide, so dust punch, is hide equivalent to visible falls? Yes, that is an equivalent. Right. Nope, there we go. Um, get children. There we go. Uh, bind. On base, integer. Ah. Right, 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 right. I need to bind it to the function instead. Okay, and with this... Previous control, get path to... So this, this makes sure that... Okay, okay, that's alright. That should be fine. Okay, let's just try this out and, and see what happens. And then we can fix it later on. Menu hbox. There we are. Let's play it. 
Um, all checks are pirates, confirmed. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. Aha. Uh, show null instance because there are... Oh, very good. Okay, so all we need to do here is just grab another VBox container and call it accessibility settings. And we hide it. Um, and then we grab the accessibility settings that we want to put in there, right? So at the moment, that's going to be screen shake, chromatic aberration, um, flip left mouse button, train speed. And that's probably it for now. Just so that we can have something in there. All right, let's try this. Um, let me turn off full screen just for the testing of things. Ah! Awesome. Fantastic. Oh, it works like a charm. Nice. That's brilliant. All right. Checks out. <laughs> Check it out. Foxy Fox. Let's try it out and see what happens and fix it later. Words to game dev. To game dev by. I yeah, they are. They, they really are. Um, um, Ayush, side of streamer. Right, Nightbot, Nightbot. Good time to commit to gear. It, 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 almost there. Almost there. <laughs> All right. So now, by default, it's going to be the general settings. Um, but because this this actually works better than I thought it would, the only thing I need to check out <laughs> is make sure that we fill and expand on the accessibility settings as well. I believe that the first function, which makes sure that the neighbors are all connected correctly, uh, iterates through all of them, right? For view box, yes, it does. It does. Okay, so now that we have this, Pressed, toggle mode, button pressed, off, right? And then we do this and we say audio set audio. Lovely. And now we just make another VBox container. That's going to be audio settings. Um, again, layout, container sizing, expand and expand. Boom. There we are. And now from general settings, we just bring over everything related to audio. Audio, master volume, music, sound effects, UI volume, ambience volume. Good. And off you go into audio settings. Lovely. Right, let's hide the other ones. All right. Uh, OX5858, the C++ workflow has improved lately. Oh, that is interesting. That's good stuff. Um, things go pretty seamless now. The learning curve is a bit unfun to get everything nicely interacting, especially across systems. I dev across Linux, Mac, and Win. Oh, that's hard mode, isn't it? And then it gets mad. I haven't, I haven't, uh, haven't it all sorted out yet. And avoid C++ changes on anything but Linux. Interesting. All right. Well, good information actually. Dust punch. I find that helping people and watching others work can always show something you haven't known since game dev is so robust no matter how experienced you are uh sir joe a lot well hello there hello there so labyrinth also i don't think i've said hello to you hello um right yeah well <laughs> in game dev it all feels like you learn something new even if you don't want to right even if you don't want to all right now that we're here let's also turn on the graphics tab that's going to be set graphics yes and we can do the same thing for graphics vbox container um, graphics settings right again layout container sizing expand expand there we are good we hide it and graphics there's quite a lot in graphics maybe brightness and saturation could go into accessibility not sure not sure but i'll okay for now i'll just leave it here in graphics um and window i'll keep window in general right sound, sound sounds good i think it sounds good we'll see all right all right settings now then our game settings are difficulty show end of turn confirmation okay good good Window, full screen and always on top. Again, fine. Audio. 
fantastic. So this is master, music, sound effects, UI, and ambience. All of those. And graphics are fairly hefty. Alright, now accessibility is the only one without a title, so let's put that in there. So far so good. This is coming along too. This is this is too easy. Something's wrong. <laughs> Alright, let's copy this. Put that into accessibility. Paste it. Not as a sibling, just paste it. And we say setting accessibility. Alright. Um, Rooney, nice UI. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Accessibility, awesome. Fantastic. Something's wrong with just, just that one. Just that one. The others are fine, but just that one button. <laughs> Some, something is terribly wrong with it, isn't there? Huh. Boy, me. Well, anyways. Okay, regardless, uh, let's put in the translation strings. Uh, I, I don't want to be behind on the translation strings, so let's try to put those in. Right, here we are. Setting translation strings. Const setting accessibility. String accessibility. Wonderful. Um, too easy, something's wrong. Sums up my first experience with Godot. <laughs> yeah, that's good. That's good, actually. Uh, okay. Um, what else do we have here? We have settings. So, right. So, this is there. That's good. That's good. Next, we have God Mode. That's nice. And Grid Visibility. So, let's start adding these as well so that they're basically prepared. Setting of God Mode. String. God Mode. And then we have uh, setting of grid visibility string. And that's going to be grid visibility. Lovely. Um, struct it. But it wasn't. It was just easy. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. Sometimes it really is that easy. But it's rare, isn't it? All right. So we've got God mode and grid visibility. In order for this to work, we have to go into settings and create a new setting. Version tutorial, in-game, in-game audio, graphic section. Where does this go? So maybe I just need a new section. Sure, let's make a new section. Um, accessibility section. String accessibility. So, my settings class is a little bit verbose, but, uh, but it works well. So, you know, who am I to judge? Dust Punch, I gotta go have my own game to make. Yo, epic. You're a... You're a warrior. <laughs> um, enjoyed the little time I was here. Hope you all have a good time. Well, thank you very much. I, I really appreciate it. I'm sure the others do as well. And best of luck making your game. Lovely stuff. Really cool. Really cool. All right. Let's make the accessibility settings as going to be var grid visibility, right? That's a float, and by default, it's going to be 1.0 um, range of 00, 0 to 1.0. Another one is going to be god mode. That's a bool, by default false, makes the player invincible. Another one is going to be... Ooh, there's allowing the player to choose health colors. Ah, how do I do this? Do I, do I, do I, do we give the player a selection of colors that they can choose from? Or do we give the player the ability to define that color themselves? Because, you know, if it's a, if it's a selection of colors, it can work fairly well. You know, just going between green, blue, purple, red, those sorts of things. I still need to think about this one. We'll see. We'll see. There's also gamepad vibration strength. Okay, so we can do that. Gamepad vibration um, multiplier float 1.0. And again, this is a range of 0, 0 to 1.0. Um, 
Right, Roland. Yes, all the other engines were surprised. At this point, you got to go. Roland, five options, four colors, and a custom button. Yeah, I would be so up for that. However, I'm also thinking about it from the position of effort, right? And because I've created a system, adding in a custom button might be a bit hacky. <laughs> it might be a bit hacky, you know? So, so yeah. Right, so that's the vibration strength. Let's move this up. Um, because these are the ones that we'll be working on first. There's animation speed. That's not bad. That's not bad. And then visual noise reduction. This one I'll definitely do right away as well. Right, these are really cool. So visual noise reduction. Var visual noise reduction. Float. No, visual noise amount. Um Gispo, if people if people give feedback, consider adding more options. You know, I, I really like that. I, I really like that approach. Sort of giving people the best options within my ability, and then the moment that becomes a, a, a necessary thing to add, working on it. I think that's lovely. Um, you can just implement the picker. <laughs> well, yeah. Oh, Acer. Acer, hello. Uh, hi. How, how, how has it been? We haven't. We also haven't talked in a long time, so yeah. But really, good stuff. Um, might be difficult with a controller. Yes, controller and a and a and a color picker are a little tricky, I imagine. Right. So this is visual noise amount multiplier. We'll have that there, um, and this is also a range of zero zero to one point oh. And with those, I think we're good. Let's start implementing these. Um, so first we bring them into the settings, right? So here we have accessibility settings and we say that we want to add a settings item base, how many times? Setting item base, four times, right? Yeah, four times. Setting item base and setting item base, four of them first is going to be grid visibility yep so grid visibility this one is god mode the third one is gamepad vibrations and visual noise amount now for grid visibility the setting title is Yeah, let's bring them in from here, right? So we got we got these, and we also need setting of God mode grid visibility, um, setting of gamepad um, vibration amount string. Then we have ooh, caps lock. The setting of visual. noise amount and I'll be clear enough um, visual noise amount how do you handle controller support um, and Acer Yagic uh, the built-in controller is is really more suited to tools rather than games uh, yeah it kind of that sort of that sort of sounds about right um, Acer you vanished my friend I did I did so I was streaming fairly consistently as well but then I got more freelance work and because it got super busy at freelance work, I realized that, the, you know, it just wouldn't work out for me in terms of the amount of time I have. Unfortunately, because truth be told, I love streaming. It is one of those things that I have always enjoyed. It, I, I mean, generally, I am a fairly productive developer already, but it just, you know, it's always worked really well. Always, always. And, and I love talking to people um, about game development, about balancing, about game design issues. So that's always been really cool. Um, and uh, to answer your question, Acer, things are nice, how about that? Yeah. Also, first of all, I'm happy that things have been going well for you. Um, things have been going fairly well. Uh, I mean, really well. Uh, really well, but, you know, nothing amazing. It's just well, like really well. Uh, so we've been talking to publishers and whatnot, and that's worked so far. It's been... 
it's been good so far, right? As in, we are seeing interest, but we haven't signed anything yet. So it's this, it's this weird, it's this, it's this weird moment. However, you know, we're not in a rush, which is good. And also with Cardbob, you know, the difference between Cardbob and this project is with Cardbob, we didn't even see the interest from publishers. Never happened. Never. For some reason, I don't know why. I think it's a great game. Uh, but now we are seeing that interest. We are seeing that element that wasn't there. That wasn't within the equation last time. Right. Um, Lex Partha. Lex Piartha. How do you handle controller support? Well, I handle it. Well, I don't handle it. At the moment. So the way the, way the game works is you don't even need to press anything. Nothing needs to change. Uh, we are going to implement an input manager later on so that we can change icons of um of of ui elements that are linked to pressing a button and whatnot so, so that's going to be put in there um otherwise but um the the way that we've designed the game so far is that it's playable with just your mouse with just your keyboard and also with just your uh, controller so all of those work but they're not super intuitive <laughs> you you need about you, know, you need about a minute or two, and we're still thinking about the best way to implement those. So we'll see, we'll see. But I do test it on the Steam Deck fairly often. So yeah, Acer, I'm glad everything's running with no problems. Will you return to streaming in the future? Miss your streams, my friend. Ah, oh, that is just the nicest, Acer. You're so cool, and um, I will be returning to streams as soon as I get an amount of free time where I know that I'll be able to do it consistently again. Because the consistency is key. I would hate to always appear just once every three months and disappear afterwards. You know what I mean? Right. Gamepad. Vibration. And that was it, right? So we got God Mode. Yeah, yeah. Four things. Fantastic. Now that we have these translation strings, we can go back to here and paste them into their respective places. Grid visibility, there you go. Gamepad vibration amount, lovely. And setting visual noise amount. Okay, um, now we go into settings to get the setting string. So visual amount multiplier, visual noise amount multiplier, gamepad vibration, god mode, and grid visibility okay there we go with grid visibility i want to show a percentage with god mode nothing with gamepad vibration again percentage and with visual noise amount again a percentage um visual noise gamepad and grid visibility are not a bool but it's going to be a range and within the range, we go from 0 to 1. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, so that's all good. Um, Acer. I'm glad everything... Yeah, uh, right, Pixter. Speaking of consistency, I don't even want to read this out loud, you know. <laughs> that was a real curveball. Uh, a bit of a salt into a wound. What about nodes and biscuits? Yeah. So for anyone who doesn't know, um, let's head over to Spotify. Without turning anything on, of course. I run, or used to run, a bit of a thing called Nodes and Biscuits. Which is right here. It's a fantastic podcast, by the way. It was one of the things that just... It just... It's so fantastic. Talking to the developers of the ecosystem of Godot. And finding out about their projects, about their workflows, about what they think about the engine itself. Just really cool stuff. Guyanga, what a great name for the podcast. Weren't you the one? Wait, were you? Were you? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. You were the one who came up with it. I just remembered. Um, Structed. Uh, would love to see more nodes and pieces. Oh, I agree. I agree. And again, it's just the thing. I've already planned getting back on top of things, right? It's just a question of time. And it, and it needs to happen, because I think that within the ecosystem of Godot, a, 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 a podcast that comes out that comes out and allows the developers using the engine to meet and listen to other developers also using the engine is, a, is, is an important part of it. So yeah, but you know how it, how it goes. 
You know, time is so precious these days, isn't it? Anyways. Um, let's grab all four of those. All right. And now we create the um, accessibility section. And we paste all of them in there. Okay. Now, this is going to be... Nope. <gasps> no! <sighs> what are you doing? Okay. Ah, I see. There's a bit of an issue there. All right. Nope. Oh, there we go. Awesome. Okay, so this equals config get value um, value accessibility section. We paste the ones we have in front. Lovely. All of those got pasted fantastically, even. <laughs> Grid visibility by default is one. God mode is false. Um, gamepad vibration multiplier is 1.0. Visual noise amount multiplier is 1.0. Right, now that we have these, let's just copy this. No, we, we also copy the accessibility section because we don't have that one yet. And we get it into saving settings, right? So, there we go. And here, it, it, it's a bit different. There we go. Instead of get value, we say set value. And we s grab those. Get rid of... Oh, that was false. Incredible. Just because of that false. Otherwise, it would have been perfect. All right. I see chat moving along. Right. Um, Stracti, I know what you mean with time. I love how you're talking. Uh, talking it for yourself and not succumbing to actual and imagined community peer pressure. Hey, Yag. Outfrost. Outfrost! Hello, Outfrost. I follow what's going on here. Instructed. Yeah. 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 You know, I mean, I, I don't really have a reason to break myself. I know what I know that I want to do it. And I do know that at one point I'll have to make a tough decision of, you know, now it's time to get back into um into recording the podcast regularly. And and yeah, I hope I just hope that happens soon. But yeah, okay. So we've implemented it into the settings. We've implemented it in there. The next thing we need to do is... Wait, let's just make sure it runs. <laughs> in, in a way that we expect it to be running. Uh, so, we, so accessibility over here, right? And we've got... Yeah, so grid visibility. We can change that. That's good. Settings of God mode, right? So God mode, good. Off, on. Gamepad vibration. That also, that also works. We can go by 1%, left or right. Fantastic. And here we are. Visual noise amount. Okay, so... Let's start implementing these in the game itself. Um, visual noise amount. So what I'm talking about when I talk about the visual noise amount is here in the background, it's spawning items. I want to reduce the number of items that are being spawned with the visual noise amount multiplier. So here we've got visual noise amount multiplier and oof. Where am I spawning things? I think that's the props manager, right? Yes. And we spawn spawn plate. Now, the spawn plate populates itself given these numbers, right? So... What I'll do here is... I'm just going to play around with the number of this, right? So probabilities, and now here we'll go with um, base amount. So var, and that's going to be common amount min, an integer of six. Var, common amount max, and that's an integer of six. Um, var, Common amount base. And that's going to be an array of integers. And I'll and that'll equal six and thirty-eight. Six and thirty-eight. I believe that in our settings I've got a signal, don't I? Signal settings changed. Yes. So spawn plate. Whenever it gets turned 
So turning on a... Th this is where all of the random generation happens anyway. Oh, okay. So that means I don't need this. Right. But I can... R right. Do we lerp it or multiply it? It's a pretty good question. I mean, I think multiplication should work pretty well here, right? So we say um, that the final integer of float common amount minimum times by game manager settings visual noise multiplier and the same thing for the other one so is it this one it is that one it is that one okay 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 okay, okay. that's good that's good so we multiply that by this i think i think that works um and then we just copy that over. Right. Oh, there we go. Lovely. And we don't need that. We just need this. All right. And this is going to be the max. All right. So we convert it to a float, multiply it, and we convert that to an integer. Lovely. So I think we can try this in game now. At the moment, is going to be spawning a fair number of things. Lovely. If we go into the menu, settings, accessibility, visual noise amount, and we bring that down to 50%. And now it should be spawning less many things. Lovely. If we bring that down to zero, it really shouldn't be spawning anything at all. Apart from very few rare items every now and again. But this is exactly what I was looking for. Fantastic. Clap, clap. Let's congratulate ourselves. It's not every day that things just work. <laughs> All right. Okay. Um, oh, thank you so much, Yagik. Um, but, oh, wow, what a name. Butter. Oh, buttermilk pancake. Interesting. Buttermilk pancake. Well, good morning to you, too. Hello. <laughs> All right. So we have this. Um, so the visual noise reduction, fantastic. That's been implemented. Then we've got grid visibility. That's interesting. And there's also God mode. Ah, God mode. Grid unit base. Grid unit wagon. That's the carriage, right? Yeah, every country has a bit of a different word for this. So there's, there are, I know of, I know of three. Wagon, car, and carriage. Is there is there a third one? No, I don't think so. Wagon, car. Ah, wag, wagon, car, cart, carriage. And there's all sorts of these, you know, little discrepancies over the world. For example, I, I think people in Canada call it a, a, a car or carriage. Car. In England, it's a carriage. Um, in Australia, it's something else, you know. Weird things. Um, uh, buttermilk pancake, how are you doing? Good. And I see that, that your mission is to make other people hungry. I I don't really like sweet stuff, so I'm fine. But I am pretty sure that some people will feel like eating something sweet afterwards. <laughs> All right. On to damage. Right. Here, um, we just... Okay, let's just do this. If game manager dot settings dot god mode then the damage value equals zero so if the god mode is on structed isn't coach also a name yeah it might be it might be let's check this out train coach my goodness this is incredible so coach might might Ah, okay. So a compartment coach is a railway a railway passenger coach, passenger car, divided into separate areas or compartments. Right, so coach is a passenger car. Very interesting. That's very interesting indeed. Coach. That's actually super cool. Right, you should make a local name selection. Ah. Uh. <laughs> yeah, 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 but, I mean, absolutely. I, I completely agree. <laughs> uh, all right, so we've got the God Mode. Let's go and test the God Mode. 
head into settings, um, full screen, yes, please. We don't want it to be always on top, just in case it crashes. We can go into a game, uh, menu, settings, accessibility, and God mode is on, right? We just turn it on. And there we go. It, it, it should work now. All right. Um, also, now, I'm, I'm getting 115 FPS. This is really cool. If we head into settings, graphics, and we scale 3D amount to just, I don't know, like 80%. Will that change the amount of FPS? So, 113? How does it... 144, 145. Lovely. You know, we do lose a little bit of the crispiness, I suppose, but it does still pretty look fantastic. This is awesome. Anyways, let's go in. And uh, into a fight. Uh, Yogi, make a pick one at random each time. <laughs> Ah, uh, yeah. Outfrost. This strain is formed of five coaches. Yeah, yeah. Of uh, five coaches. This strain is formed of five. This is is five, fifteen cars long, right? Okay. So if if everything works all right, then we shouldn't get any damage there. Let's see. Ah, interesting. <laughs> interesting. So if settings god mode let's just make sure that we've got that there god mode i think i got that right yes the damage value is zero and then we call super uh bar, 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 bear bear like lion <clears throat> at first i thought it was going to be a super complex name but no it's just the most straightforward thing lovely and bear like lion hello and thank you very much. Um, I'm glad you like the look of the game. <laughs> uh, Code Cuba, hello. 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 Welcome to the stream. The reason why I always look down is because I only have an ultra light, right? Um, and, and so I'm, um, I'm getting the help of my tiny little useful iPad to see the chat. <laughs> my good old game launches on Steam today. Really? Does it? That's awesome. Okay, but anyways, why doesn't this work? So... Enemy turn wagon damage received damage value. Right, so this should have happened. And then there's the wagon bob where we animate a hit. And this should also happen only if there. This is interesting. What does the super method do? Right, right, right. So only. If there is a damage value, we kill the co the damage color tween. And then we flash unit white. So this isn't grit unit base. This is the only thing that... Ah, right, right, right. <clears throat> it's not on took damage. It's the took damage, right? No. Take damage. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Take damage. Yep, yep, yep. Found it. Awesome. And that's in grit unit base. Now then. Wait, it, uh, I see. I see. Can I do this? If self is grid unit wagon. I think I can. Okay, so let's do that. Um, in this case, and game manager dot settings, god mode. Then we say no. Here. Yeah, that's fine. But no. Here we just say amount equals zero. All right. Let's see how well this works. Right. Uh, this looks fantastic. Roadmap, wish listable. Um, and, and yeah, also, also, hello. I don't think I've said hello to you yet. And, okay, so, think, first of all, thank you very much for saying it looks fantastic. I actually really like it myself. I'm, I'm, I'm super happy with how the game's progressing with everything that, 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 um, um, with its progress as well. Um, and the roadmap. So, somewhere between release in January, February to 
summer, right? That's t the timeline right now, and we'll see how that pans out. At the moment, we unfortunately still don't have a Steam page, but you know, it, it, it's close to a deadline. I know, I know, so stop throwing those eggs. <laughs> but we're getting there, super close now. Um, and at the moment, the, the only way you know to do this is by subscribing to the newsletter. Uh, newsletter. The only reason that we've put up the newsletter at the moment is just so that we can inform the people that the Steam page is up once it's up. So yeah. Anyways, um, God Mode should be on, and now I shouldn't be receiving any damage. So let's see how that goes. But yeah, it's pretty much what you can imagine, right? Um, I'm not sure how much of it you've seen, but you know, it, it, it's a roguelike deck builder, but you're really building a stronger, longer, better train. Um, maximum length is five. There's good reasons for that. Okay, first of all, I should be able to deal damage. Yes. And now they should not deal any damage to me. Fantastic. Oh, yes. Lovely. Okay, so that works. Um, that works. That's good. Oh, okay, okay. So, so one of the really nice things about this game is you can shoot this guy up there, right? And now he'll try to attack this guy. However, this will only work out... So you see the enemy icons on the right, right? This will only work out if I stay there with my locomotive. Because the guy with more uh, life points goes first, and this one goes second. So if I move away, I take no damage. However, this enemy moves first and slides down one further because there's nothing there. So he won't be taking any damage. Yeah. Yeah, however, if I had stayed there with my locomotive, they would have taken damage, but me too. And I'm not particularly happy about that. Right, let's shoot them away. Also this guy. Lovely. Can I still do that? Yes, I can. Awesome. Lovely. Okay. I'm super happy with this. Okay, so anyways, God Mode works. Settings, accessibility, God mode off. And now I should be able to take damage again. Ooh, that's an error that shouldn't be happening. Yeah, I took damage. Lovely. Fantastic. Um, the enemy just moved away because there's another thing in this game which is called environmental danger. Uh, this little triangle here shows me that in one turn there'll be an environmental danger traveling across that entire row and hitting anything it needs. Okay, regardless, this all works. Lovely. And, um, yeah. And then there's grid visibility. How do I do this? I'm not entirely sure. I think I could go into project settings and do shader globals. Right? And this would be grid visibility multiplier. And it's going to be a float. And we add that. Grid visibility multiplier. And by default, it's going to be one. And then in settings, out frost, by the way, this looks sick. It does. <laughs> it does, doesn't it? <laughs> it? Yeah, yeah. I'm having a lot of fun making this game. It's it's lovely. It's lovely. And also the music that you hear. I, I don't know how well you can hear the music, but but we we've got. Uh, so it's custom music. It was it was handmade, tailor made, just for this, just for this game. Um, but yeah, right. So now in settings, right? There's grid visibility. And then when we're applying graphic settings, I think uh, shader glo global shader. Ah, okay. Rendering server global shader parameter set. Okay. So rendering server global shader parameter set. Grid visibility multiplier, I believe. Yep. And the amount is just going to be grid visibility multiplier. 
Bit of a mouthful, that function. It is, isn't it? Foxy Fox. <laughs> um, Rackbit music slaps. I completely agree with that. Right on. Right on. Also, for anyone in the chat, Rackby is one of the other programmers on the team making this game. We're a, we're a, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure what I've mentioned is we're a, we're a small studio of two programmers, one person doing everything related to the audio, and an I working on the 3D and, as you can see, sometimes also programming a bit. <laughs> Right, so this should this should be setting the glo the the global shader parameter. Uh, what did you say? What did what were you saying was handmade for the game? Uh, music, music and audio, right? So there's a person, uh, Peter, his name is, who's working on the audio. Now let me just go into the settings, uh, turn off full screen. I just want to make sure that this is not throwing any errors in accessibility, right? So we've got uh, grid visibility here. Fantastic, fantastic. Okay, so that's been saved. That's awesome. Um, grid visibility, apply rendering settings. This is all we need. All right. So now, if we head over to gridcell.tscn. Uh, Ganga, it's interesting the player is a train locked to a line in the center of the playing field. Are there any cool things you can share about how you're using this limited situation between game design decisions? Yeah. I can, I can also show it off later, but I, for example, at the moment, um, you can position the enemy units with your, um, with your carriages, cars, um, coaches, <laughs> wagons. Um, and, and one of the things that they try doing is that they try avoiding that track. They try their hardest. But if you use your, your, your weapons well, you can push them onto the track and then ram into them but that deals damage to you and them it destroys them but it deals damage to you however there are uh, cards planned that when you activate a card one ram is going to be free of damage for example and then in terms of in terms of design the whole thing is designed around the fact that your cards all have different ranges and you are limited to a single axis of movement which then creates all sorts of interesting decisions and I feel like there's more but that's all I can think of right now <laughs> all right so we've got a great cell shader here oh awesome right how do I get a global shader uniform global uniform load oh okay easy peasy eh <laughs> right, and now we get the the whole thing that calculates alpha, and we just multiply by grid visibility multiplier, right? Should be straightforward. Let's see whether that actually works. <laughs> I'm really curious about that. Oh, I, I, I really don't like when this happens. So, for some reason, whenever I change things in here, right? In here. Uh, in, in the shader itself. Um, right, so whenever I change things in the shader, even if it doesn't change much, all of the... All of the instance shader parameters, for some reason, get reset to the default values. We can also see it here changes grid cell .tsen. say all of those for some reason get turned back into the defaults i mean why and can even remember them but but it's cached somewhere so if i reset these and then save the scene or reload the scene it's still going to go back to the defaults it's like there's a cache somewhere saying yo the shader got changed always go back to the defaults now until someone presses a button in the inspector or something i don't know but but yeah it, this is one of those things that does happen um anyway, anyways uh the yagi yeah i've had that too it's very annoying it is isn't it Gyanga, you mean you can pierce the enemies on the track <laughs> yeah that's the idea that seems annoying damn it is a bit annoying luckily it happens very rarely um 
it's not it's not it's not very common but yeah it still happens right and so long as it happens it's just going to be a thing anyways uh border width is zero zero nine color white flipped Ooh. let's move this over there right size ratio uh size ratio is 1.67 texture mix zero flipped false very good so we have that on here and next thing is highlight mesh highlight mesh over here all right so similar th wait was i reading the wrong one no i was reading the right one okay good so alpha multiplier that's fine border width border width is 0 0.2 highlight mesh i mean the color is still white isn't it it is good oh yeah i mean this shader by the way is actually super cool because it lets you do a lot of things you can change the ratio you can flip it you can change the border size um th this is a single shader for every single grid cell cell right right uh out for this and script variables um q and one f3 i guess no piercer has been a source of inspiration are there more that have inspired the game. Outfrost, uh, part of the reason I started favoring consts over export variables. Mm. I mean, yeah, w uh, yeah. The autocomplete, for example, is a. Uh, it's it's not exactly great all the time, but it's fine. It's it's not exactly extra work apart from you know clicking a few things. But here with this, this is a bit of extra work. <laughs> and other inspiration apart from uh, Snowpiercer, well we the the other parts of the inspiration have been mechanical rather than setting related right so there's been into the breach for the combat and various deck building games for the cards um so yeah okay let's go back to this 0 0.2 is that flipped false sides ratio oh no 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 i'm looking at the wrong side um, alpha multiplier is 0 0.4, 0 0.048, 1.75. Okay, and again, visual, let me just make sure I got this right. 167, um, white, 1, alpha, mul that's color, border width, alpha multiplier isn't even measured. Okay, 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 that's looking good. Let's check this out. Let's make sure this works. Okay. All right, so it does work. Lovely. So now if we go into the menu, settings, accessibility, uh, grid visibility, down to 16%. Fantastic. All right, all right. Now, if there was basically anyone masochistic enough to turn this all the way down, then they basically get no visible grid at all. I mean check that out for accessibility <laughs> do you want to see the grid are you sure you can really bring that all the way down to zero and just play it hardcore mode <laughs> i actually quite like that that's cool anyways let's check out what that looks like in a fight environment where the grid is much more abundant jitsubo some people like to live off the grid <laughs> some people do all right, now we change that to 30%. Yeah, it actually looks pretty good. It actually looks pretty damn good. But all of these visualizations get uh, get multiplied as well, which I'm pretty happy about because this is supposed to be a global variable overall offsetting the visibility of the grid if for one reason or another it was, it was too strong. All right, so this is good stuff. Um, yeah, lovely, lovely, fantastic, okay, nice, nice, all working out good, uh, Pilkenstein, this game looks slick as hell, I, I should, you know, one day soon I'll start taking these and framing them and putting them on my walls, <laughs> uh, 
Really cool. Anyways, uh, thank you very much for saying that. That's awesome. All right. So let's commit all of these. Grid. Yeah. GUI settings. GUI settings. Wagon. Grid unit base. Yes. Tasks. No, not yet. Base local IDs. Yes. And yes. Okay. So add um, four extra accessibility settings. All right, let's push those. One last part of this uh, lump of tasks is going to be generating new translation files, right? So we go and we generate the POT. Lovely. Let's bring PoEdit into the picture. Translation. Load from a POT file. And let's take a look. Okay, so here we have settings, accessibility. So that's accessibility. And then... God mode, not uh, no God mode. Diffic grid visibility is not difficulty. Um, grid visibility. Gamepad vibration. Gamepad vibration. Noise amount. Visual noise amount. Okay. No, well, mm, I think we could be a bit more specific about this. <sighs> Background objects. I think that'll work well. All right, we save this, turn that off, and we go into the game to see and make sure that everything's been translated correctly. Right, so we go into settings, accessibility, very good. And then... Grid visibility, god mode, vibration, gamepad vibration, background objects. Fantastic. All working out. Right. We've got some new messages here. Right. So also, uh, again, Pilkenstein, <laughs> thank you so much for your lovely message. It was awesome. Uh, th thetra, thetra, double O. Taking notes of wonderful ideas. Always a good idea to take notes of wonderful ideas, isn't it? Uh, thetra, O, O. Honestly, I just, I just, I just taking a scribble of the awesome person in the corner. Ah, show it to me afterwards. <laughs> like, I'm, I'm really curious, by the way. Yo gig, I really like your UI. As a control enthusiast, it makes me very happy. Background density. Yeah, but background density, it's, mm, maybe background objects density, maybe. And yeah, uh, regarding the UI, I am a big enthusiast, a big enjoyer of control nodes too. And I love, because, you know, uh, UI gets messy extremely quickly, like really quickly for some reason. And um, just doing that right, paying a little more attention to your control nodes and having a rough idea of how you want to put things together can get, uh, can go a really long way. Okay, a really long way. Right, uh, so all of this is cool. Oh, by the way, Peaks, let me show you something. So, if we uh, full screen it, all right, check this out, all right, so the train is traveling at a speed and one of the uh, one of the really cool things in the accessibility settings already is the, the travel speed multiplier. So if someone does not enjoy that high speed and it's uncomfortable for them, you can bring that down to, for example, 20%, right? And when you do, the train slows down. Of course. All right, Yargig, I'm currently working on a fully custom editable rich text renderer. It's definitely messy. I can I can imagine. That must be super messy. And yeah, and so when the train slows down, there's a there's a lot of objects in there that are being spawned because the timer doesn't get updated with this. But it does look like a really thick and cool forest, doesn't it? But but we can also do the uh, the thing the other way around. So we can speed it up to 200%. W which just makes the train ride at the speed of a bullet train. <laughs> we're going far. We, we're, we're going real far here. And now I'm just imagining this with motion blur. And I just can't wait. I can't wait. Th this will be so cool with motion blur. So let's go into a fight to 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 take a look at what that what what this looks like, right? There's just a lot of things moving at a high speed, but you know, just super high speed. 
you can barely see what's what, what's even going on. You just know that there are objects out there. Structor, is it stuttering now? Is it some sort of speed up, speed down interval? The stuttering is... No, so it's not stuttering. I think the stutteriness only comes from the fact that um, it's not being streamed at full frames per second. And because of the super high speed, it looks like there's a bit of a stutter. Um, so I'm seeing this at 148 FPS and smooth. Right. And now if we just go back to the original, which is 100%. There we go. Nice. And we're back. Right, so this is the original version. Um, now, another thing that you can do already in the settings is screen shake strength. Right, Sc so yeah, <laughs> if, if if you really enjoy this, for example, you can make it three hundred percent the original strength, right? And then the camera is just it's really bouncing around. And if you combine this with the travel speed multiplier. Now we're really getting somewhere. <laughs> oh, I love this so much. These settings have been, you know, they've just been awesome. Uh, I've, 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 I've come to appreciate the atmosphere of the game even more since implementing these settings. Right, grid visibility, god mode of, gamepad vibration, that's... There's no way I can implement that now anyway, but there's also the background objects. There's chromatic aberration strength, which is only triggered when when your, your uh, train car gets destroyed. Right, so, yeah. Right. Um, Aiden Pond, hey, uh, that looks cool. Train go... <laughs> I, I completely agree. Um, Aiden Pond, that looks cool. Thank you, thank you. Uh, so far, so good. Now, oh, wait, peeps, let me show you something. All right, so let's restart the game. We're back. Um, we can do an artillery car, which has all sorts of cards. Useful. Um, and do I want any of these? Nah, I think I'm pretty, pretty good. Um, as you can see, every card that is hovered also shows you the pattern that it has on the grid relative to the center, and the center is the wagon from which it is going to be used. Uh, this one's good. Okay, so let me just keep it- Oh, wait! There's something I completely forgot to show you, so check this out. Um, add upgrade point five times. Oh, no! <laughs> I accidentally- I accidentally put in a command to quit. Okay, so one more time. Uh, Captain Onosa. Hello, hello. Neat train you got there. Yeah, trains. There's something special about trains. Right, so let me show you something which I think is super cool. Um, add upgrade point. Again, this console is based off of the plugin of Jitspo, which is called console, game console, something like that. Definitely find out the asset library. It's super fun to use. Very easy, super fun. Um, right, so if you look at if you look at this locomotive, every time I upgrade it, its visual changes a little bit as well. Alright, so now we do Picky Jester. Lovely. Now he's got a little bit more of an armor at the top. Jitspo, developer console. Yes, developer console. Draw, master might draw. Right, now he got a brand new chimney at the top for some reason. Don't know why. And now it got extra armor. Um, Slacks, can we have a link to it? In the asset library, if you search for developer console, it'll pop up. The author is Jitsbo. Now, this wagon over here, train car, carriage, you know, coach. Oh, this is a coach, right? Every time you upgrade it, same thing happens. <laughs> and now you can be delivering more people, right? Because you get, you get, you get more floors within the train car. So that's a, that's a triple coach right there. Um, and then it also happens here with, with this one. Incendiary carpet shot, super cool. Um, let's upgrade it one more time. Artillery chaos. Yep, there we go. Right. And you can see how the visual has truly been upgraded for all of them. Here we are. 
goodness. What a view. What a view. You know, this should really be put somewhere into the game as well, so that you can, so, so that the players can just enjoy looking at their train. I think that's very important. Anyways, uh, Foxy Fox 99, love the visual of race, triple deck. Damn. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, triple decker. <laughs> That's exactly what it is. Anyways, okay, let, let, let me show you what I wanted to show you regarding the fight. Also, settings pain in terms of the difficulty so that we get more enemies in there. Fantastic. We did get more enemies. All right, enemies, come closer. Go for it. Awesome. Oh, that is painful. What are you doing? Uh, anyways, right, so we've got artillery attack. In in my opinion, in my opinion, the thing about... Well, one of the coolest things about this game is specifically this, right? So, if I move back, shoot here with my artillery, it's going to deal one damage to my, uh, to my coach, carriage there, passenger wagon, passenger car, and he's going to move this enemy forwards, right? The arrows are visualizing where that enemy is going to be moved. So, okay, let's do that. And now, when the enemy is on the rails, I can ram into them. Oh, <laughs> oh yes, that's cool. Uh, quite a Sonia. Wow, looks cute. Is it... It's in Godot. Yes, it is in Godot. Godot 4.2.2. Stable. At the moment. Quite a song, yeah. Aww. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's basically exactly how I feel every time that happens. Stratton, awesome. I agree. I agree. That is lovely. Okay, anyways, I can't move now, so the only thing I can do is just wait for these enemies to, you know, do their thing. Which they did. Now, I, I could have been much more tactical and strategic and not taken any damage last turn, but but yeah, I didn't, unfortunately. Um, right, now, you know, a, a, the, a, a similar principle applies here. However, I think it's even more interesting when you start mixing the enemy attacks together. So here, we can see that this enemy is trying to attack this grid zone over there, right? Oh no, not that one. But I can shoot here move that enemy into the line of fire of that enemy and now they'll well this enemy will attack this one and this one will move closer to that one which is not going to exactly do anything but if i had one more artillery shot then i could have shot it here and brought him even closer and they both would have attacked one another lovely oh wait maybe i can god <clears throat> it takes two add ap Oh, see? Oh no. This game is so much easier with cheat codes. <laughs> Let's do this. Alright. Also, movement costs plus one action point for each movement, but it resets at the beginning of your turn. Right, so now that this has happened, they'll both attack one another. First, so the order of execution is seen on the on the right side over here. Right, so this is the, the first enemy, second and third enemy. This enemy isn't doing anything. This enemy is targeting their uh, friend, right? So that's going to happen first, and then this one will try ramming into him. At the end of next turn, they both should have just one HP left. Fantastic. Fantastic. That's what I was looking for. When you hover over an enemy, it also shows you their maximum range. So th the issue that I'm facing here, for example, is that the maximum range doesn't reach all the way to this enemy. So even when I move away, this enemy will not shoot all the way over here. However, this enemy moves first, right? Order of execution here. So this enemy moves first. So he's going to move first down here, and only then will this one start shooting, dealing damage, right? Lovely, lovely. This is so cool. <sighs> Perfection. Just just awesome. <laughs> that is just too good. All right. Let's wrap this up. Lovely. And lovely. 
We get rewards. What rewards do we get? Right. Let me move away. There we go. Uh, we can either receive an upgrade point or get a bit of money. I'm go I, I don't need an upgrade point because I cheated at the beginning of the game. So let's go into a chop shop. Uh, Foxy Fox 909, 200 EQ. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you know, ideally, the goal of this game is to make you feel that way. To make you feel that way when you play your cards right. Um, Yogi Hasonyats and Ah, right. And welcome again. Deliver a cargo car to the next station. Sure. Ah, yes. So this is a cargo car that, that you need to deliver and it is a lot of rubber ducks you know because where would where would programmers be be without rubber ducking so yep that's that's your that's your cargo <laughs> right and there's also a shop here um actual card game planning yep <laughs> yeah and then when you get to your shop here uh you can buy auxiliary cards that just help you with playing cards from your deck in a smart way. Uh, you can also buy extra modules here, you know, uh, for example here, card, syringe, energy siphon, and fighting back. For, uh, so this module, for instance, gets you three extra action points when a wagon is destroyed. This one will allow you to draw an extra card at the beginning of a fight. And this one gets you one AP every time. Um, an enemy is destroyed. So, yeah, you know, the good old shop that we all know. And you can also remove a card. Right on. Let's ride on. Uh, convoy, fight, fight. Yeah. So I accepted a mission where I have to deliver the, the, the cargo car, right? Now, what's messed up about it is... It, it, it doesn't do anything. It, it doesn't give me any new cards. It doesn't. It doesn't allow me to play in a different way. I just need to protect it. But then, when I do get it to the next station, I do get extra points. So, yeah, Foxy Fox, are those your debugging duckies? <laughs> yeah, yeah, those are the debugging duckies. Uh. All right. Now then, let's get to the main menu. I'll take uh, a quick five-minute break, maybe something like that. Um, and then we can... Oh, wait, before I do, let's comment these. Um, let's also take care of this. Grid visibility, gamepad vibration. All of those have been done. Lovely. So we can move those to the bottom of the list. All right. Retrigger tutorials. This could be a button indeed. I could add a button. I mean, why not? There is nothing... <gasps> I could implement a new class, which is... A single purpose button for changing a setting, right? So, so yeah, damn. Um, Thetra, how can I get the scribble of you to you? So, uh, oh, tuna dinner. If you lose the duckies to the fog, you are a terrible person. Absolutely, you should never do that. Whatever happens, do not do that. Um, how can I get a scribble? How, how can I get a scribble off you too? Well, the easiest way is to join uh, Fog Pierce's Discord. So, I think it's on Mad Cookies. No, not this one. But I think on madcookies.games, there should be a link to our Discord somewhere. Right, yeah, on madcookies.games, you can join our Discord. 88 people online. That's rare. Um, but yeah, and then and then if you if you don't mind posting it so that other people can see it as well, feel free to post it there. You can leave right away if you don't want to be joined in the Discord otherwise. And yeah, good stuff. <laughs> I'm usually super curious. <laughs> uh, Arena, Arena. That's actually very clever. Uh, is notes and biscuits coming back? It is coming back. We actually had a conversation about this earlier. It's just it's just a question of picking the right time. Because I do not want to be posting irregularly, right? I want to make sure that I can keep a cadence going. Um, so, so yeah. But it's definitely coming back. Just like my streaming. My streaming is definitely coming back as well. Just when the right time comes. Okay. So, 
uh, uh, let's separate this. So we'll do um, change, and it's going to be update English translations with the new accessibility settings um, and tasks. So it's uh, docs and Christoph's tasks. Kaboom! Right. Uh, sprinting for obsidian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, just like uh, Yargig also said, that is obsidian, and obsidian is, is good indeed. I actually do this quite a lot, and we have a lot in obsidian. So, ch so check this out. So, you know, this is one thing, but for example, when I was designing the progression of the game, I, oh, careful with your eyes, um, I designed the entire logic of how progression happens in the game uh, using the Excalidraw plugin in obsidian another thing that i used it for was for example here where i was thinking about the name for the game i had some of them were generated some of them were proposed by uh, viewers th because this was done during a stream right but these whiteboard plugins such as excalidraw or the built-in one are just fantastic because you can visualize your ideas your your game design ideas in a way that makes that makes more difficult connections look simpler and i think that's really important uh for example here where i was first designing cards this was my design document for train cars and cards at the same time and it was also a task list what i was doing is all of the cards above this line still needed to be implemented and then the cards below this line or rather below this line over here were implemented already um, how do you set up Obsidian for collaborating with others? Right, yeah. So, because we don't need to collaborate in real time, I actually keep Obsidian in the folder structure of the project. Right? So, I've, I've, I've got a folder called Docs. Right? And there's Docs for project management. There's overall documentation. There are these drawings over here. And then there's images, right? So it's basically just, just, um, just that. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So peeps, I'll take a, I'll take a quick break. I'll be basically right back. Um, I just, I just want to stretch my legs a little bit. I'll turn on. So I've got this. I'll turn that on and turn off the display capture. Capture. These are just random videos that I've taken of Fogpiercer over the course of the last. Oh. Over the course of the last, uh, I don't know, I don't know, uh, two months? Yeah, two months. Right. Um, is it a GitHub repo free syncing hack? Uh, I assume this one's paid. Quite a Sonia. Uh, there's official sync feature. Yeah, the official sync feature, I think, is paid. And this is, well, this is how it was intended to be used, right? It's just a, it's just a markdown editor. That's basically all it is. But it works quite well for our needs because we don't need to be collaborating actively. Anyways, beeps. I'll be right back. I think I think I've got a button on the on the mic. Yeah, okay. Let me just press it here. Microphone. This one.
Here we are. All right, microphone back online. <sighs> yeah, I don't think I'm muted anymore. If I am, that would be an issue. Yeah, okay, awesome. But yeah, okay, so we've got this. We updated the tasks. I'll go back to the tasks here and do one more thing. Before choosing the health colors, we'll do re-trigger animations. Although I said that this would be too difficult, I'm just going to put another task there, which is implement a settings button. Right? So, in settings, we'll, for now we'll work in general settings because those are the ones that we can see. So we can add a button. And it's going to be called what is this one called? It's called GUI settings item. So this one is going to be called GUI settings button. And then this, uh, an example of what we might want is reset tutorial messages, right? We do want it a little bit larger. So let's let's do that. Let's make sure it's got it's got roughly the same size as the others. Lovely. Roughly the same size. What was the size on this anyway? We can keep it consistent. Here we go. Alright. So 70 indeed. And then what do we do with the container sizing? We can either do shrink begin, shrink center, or shrink end. That could work. Oh, wait. I am in the be right back scene. <laughs> that is one of those things that I always forget. Yeah, yeah, okay, okay. You see, I just wanted to keep some things a little secret. For example, exactly the thing that I'm streaming so that you guys can see. Silly me, silly me. And Macarisms, hello, hello. Welcome, welcome to this stream. <laughs> mm. And also, I just wanted to say that uh, many people in the chat are also saying that they're waiting for the Godot plushie. That is exciting. I think the Godot plushie was a lovely thing to do. Right. Can we add a little bit of a spacer here? I think we can, right? Just like that. Just 
right? So just buttons, space. <sighs> now, how do we do this? So, first of all, let's save it into assets, UI, GUI, and then we've got settings, I believe. Here we go. Settings. Good. And we'll just save it there. GUI. Settings button. All right. So now we can take a look at it here. Fantastic. And we'll create the script GUI settings button. Fantastic. Start with the class name. GUI settings button. Right. Export variable which is going to be we need to keep it consistent with the other one i mean i know that the other one wasn't done the best way but let's just keep it consistent now that we can um so so the first thing is setting title and then setting string right so that's uh setting title string um, that's going to be set something and export var setting string string equals setting name in script used to update the right um, property right um, mark um, Makerisms. I'm working on a game for a game jam currently. Going good so far. That is fantastic, by the way. That is fantastic. W what, what game jam are you working on? Game jams are... So good. Just so good. You know, there's a, there's a lot that a person learns at game jams. Truly, an immense amount the limited time often pushes you to just try new things in a way that you wouldn't do it otherwise export var and uh, we need a target value right i think i can make that into an array right so target value and that's going to be an array an array just an array right Maybe target values? Yeah. Let's work with target values. I'll implement it in a way where it doesn't make use of the array. <laughs> because, because it's easier that way. But then I'll be able to eventually uh, make use of it. But when I do need to make use of it, that's when I'll program it. Right. Um, yeah. So just an empty array for now. Right. Um, Captain Onosa, me too, Makerisms. I'm doing the pirate software game jam. Oh, that is lovely. That is lovely. And you too. Wonderful. Um, and the restrictions of the theme as well. What are the restrictions of the theme, if I may ask? My game is a store management dungeon crawler. You know, I was actually thinking about joining this, um, this jam, but then I got turned off by the fact that you would need to export it as a web build. Now, I completely understand why that would be there as a limitation, not limitation, as a rule. Because, first of all, it's safer to run it online um, in the web. Uh, second of all, it's easier to share. But it all comes back to the safety and simplicity, right? All these reasons. It's just simple and safe. Um, at the same time, you, you, you can't really bring out the best features, graphical features, when you're exporting to web, which... Although it shouldn't be the primary reason why you're making uh, making a jam game, it just kind of feels like you know why 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 not? <laughs> All right, let's export category, and that's going to be called values, and uh, export export a category as well here that are going to be called settings, just so that we've got the consistency. Kind, bool, target. No, we'll, we'll, we'll just grab the kind of a thing it is, the type of a thing it is from the array, because we can we can define that. Um, right, now in ready, we just need to say text equals settings title. Right? If there is no settings title... Uh, 
Um, let's do this. Const um, default settings title string and that equals set like that and this will be the default settings title uh let's hope that works right um fair enough um makerisms the main thing is safety and speed because there is fifteen thousand people in the game jam yeah yeah I imagine having to download all of those that wouldn't be possible um i found out the hard way it looks worse on the web it always does right Captain Nano said, yeah, the last Game Jam didn't have that restriction and it caused a lot of problems for the Game Jam organizers. Ah, what were the issues that they faced? Was it that they just had to spend an, an immense amount of time or were they really targeted by viruses and, you know, things along those lines? Nine days left in the jam. Gotcha. Gotcha. Right, so here we can say, if there is no settings title or settings title equals equals default settings title then text equals else all good um someone forgot to set this one right so here we'll just say warning unset title lovely uh makerisms good engine official security problems caused delays and just took too long in general. I see, I see. So they were possibly also scanning for viruses just to make sure that they don't get infected. Right, right. But y yeah, it's all, it also makes sense with, with, with the sheer amount of people participating in the game jam, right? Okay, so we got the title. And then here we just need to do pressed, connect. Um, on pressed function on pressed um, and then we say game manager dot settings dot set and we set the settings string to target values zero right um, if target values dot size is if we have something in there right is less than one two is less than two. Oh no when when the size equals one right that's when we use the first value of the target values right Oh, wait. I know what we can do. We can create an enum called finds. Right? Dot finds. And that's going to be um, value or function. And here we'll export a variable called kind, which is kinds and by default it's going to be kinds dot value and right so we match kind with kinds about value and if the kinds is a function then instead if right export variable target function string target function name function name no let's just keep it empty right and here we can say if target function name then settings right game manager settings call target function name right okay so that's going to allow us to do all of that um specifically with this one right so we got the gui settings button now we can rename it because we've already saved it as a separate scene ah 
it's not been saved. I see. Fantastic. Fantastic. All right. Reset tutorials. All right. Let's set this in our base local IDs. Const. There we go. Reset tutorials. I think I think I think I think that'll work, right? Um, and setting strings doesn't doesn't really matter uh, because we're going to call a function. The target values don't matter either, and the target function in settings is going to be no, just settings. Here we go. Uh, flush tutorial settings because we already have I, <laughs> we already have this one um, so, so I'll just do that target function name is just flushing the tutorial functions um, let's call a print saying tutorial settings flushed and let's take a look will this work will this work at all settings Okay. Tutorial settings flushed. Fantastic. So now this is going to allow us to make buttons for the settings that will either set a value to a specific value, to either set a specific value to uh, a property of the settings or to call a function. Lovely. Lovely. And I'm not worried about a performance because it's such a tiny thing. Right. Um... Nine days left, right. Um, makerisms. I feel like working on this game jam is messing with my sense of time. Why is it messing with your sense of time? Does it feel like there's more time than you thought there was? Or does it feel like time is flying away much faster than you thought it might be? Makerisms. What are the conditions to be able to do a takeover stream here? The conditions, I believe, would need to be answered by someone else. But I imagine it is... No, I actually have no idea. <laughs> and I would hate to be speaking on behalf of someone who actually has an idea. So yeah, make reasons. It feels like there's more time somehow. I know that feeling. I know that feeling. It, it, and that feeling is especially important when... Well, it mainly shows itself when you're progressing fairly quickly, right? And I also notice that that feeling is mainly possible when you've either got a very small team or you're working by yourself. Um... Right, okay, let's add this. GUI settings, GUI settings, uh, button and button. Excellent. Settings itself, we discard the changes here. Reload, fantastic. Base locale IDs, yep. And fantastic. We can also, yeah, we'll do this separately, right? So add a settings related button that either sets a value or triggers a function in the settings class. Wonderful. That's doing a lot of what I was worried about in the past. I was worried about these things just not being easy to do. Right. Docs. Um, Christoph's tasks. All right. Pushed to git. And wonderful. Right. Um, makerisms. I'm working solo plus four QA testers. A bit of a peculiar team. Y y yeah, you can say that again. And um, that must be awesome, by the way. <laughs> Basically, every time you have anything and you're not sure about how well that works, there are four people making sure or trying it out, right? Um, Zinerki. Why not use a Kanban board in Obsidian for tracking tasks? It, uh, the... Uh, so, so Zinerki, the only reason why I'm not using an Obsidian in, uh, I mean Obsidian, Kanban in Obsidian is this is, this works with how my head works, right? This is extremely readable. Um, the structure is defined by how I want the structure to be as well. So, so yeah, yeah, it's just, it's just that. It's, it's because it works really well for me. And with Obsidian, I I mean Obsidian, with, with Kanban boards, I really like them. But then we'd probably be using Trello so that we can also collaborate real time, which we don't need to at the moment. 
Uh, good XP. Nice surprise to see you here. I was curious about the train game. Ah, the train game. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Still happening. Still going strong. Zanurki, I like Kampan because of the whole pillar style. It's cool. Yeah, been there. I mean, I, actually, it took me a really long time to find out that this is all I need, right? This keeps a very clear history as well of all the things that, that, that you've done. And I was one of the very... I was one of those people that started with Kanban, uh, then went over to things like Jira, um, Jira Notion, uh, Monday, you know, all, all sorts of things. I even tried uh, Airtables. And, and, um, and then at the end of the day, I just tried using Obsidian, or rather just a markdown list, and it was so good. Felt so easy. It felt like it felt like I'm keeping track of history, clarity, and then also information in a very clear and concise way. Uh, but then again, it's probably just because of the sort of a person I am. Right, right. Uh, it's okay. We use Planka for keeping track of collaborative tasks. We love it. Is Planka Kanbo, uh, Kanban? Cool, cool. Uh, then we got Markerisms. I'm trying out Obsidian, haven't gotten the hang of it yet. Yeah, it takes a while. Now then, where were we? Uh, good XP. Right, good XP. This is the trains game. <laughs> we're back. Um, <clears throat> also, the first time you played the game, there's this very quick tutorial just so that just so that there's at least something because we have been sending these to publishers and third parties who might be trying the game out or doing some, you know very light QA and some very basic rudimentary information was was necessary right uh, as usual oh, okay. let's go with Monica Alt snap that's awesome and then we can do an artillery it's a surefire way of doing of doing well I think also I really need to fix this by the way I probably will fix this this is this is driving me nuts why? <laughs> Bordex, hello, hello. Also, I know you probably do not plan on just chatting in Czech. I'm just saying that you know, let's keep it, let's keep it English only. Um, Zinoke, the way I describe Planka is Trello but self-hosted and really fast. Well, because it's self-hosted, of course it's going to be. But that is fantastic, by the way. I really like the idea of it. So Planka, interesting, interesting indeed. All right, well, let's fight. But first, let me turn the difficulty back to hard rather than painful. It does get, you know, we recently tweaked uh, the difficulty of the game. And it's now it's at a level where you can play on hard. But it will be difficult. Really difficult. Right. Oh, wait, before I give this more of a play, let me go back into game, check out grid and do it's grid right yeah yeah okay so seven eight five eight let's do five eight let me let me test what this feels like so um as you could have just seen i just changed the size of the grid and it's very straightforward to do so just because of the way that we've set up um the grid class i suppose um and yeah super happy about that so let's give that a go let's go into a convoy fight <clears throat> Right. Uh, what's the name of the task track of that task tracking software? The, the one I'm using, it's not a task tracking software. I'm just misusing Obsidian, which is a markdown file editor, really. And uh, Mars06, welcome and good morning. I hope you've uh, rested well and have got the creative juices going. Good stuff. Uh, Creator, thank you. Obsidian, right? Obsidian, yeah, yeah. It is Obsidian, but I, I, I don't personally. I wouldn't even recommend it as a as a task management software. It's just, it's just it works for me, and I'm weird in some ways. It's an okay. Organizing documentation and shared nodes, having a well laid out task tracker. Yeah, I mean, it can be used that way. It certainly can. Anyways, uh, we can close that tutorial and start fighting. So, first things first. I've mentioned this before, but I need to destroy this van. Um, the top left corner information also tells you about this. It's a support unit. It will escape if it's the last unit alive, which means that I need to 
avoid damage, deal damage to these enemies, but I also need to destroy the module van first, right? Multiple things at the same time. So let's go ahead and try that. It's exciting, by the way. Unfortunately, at the moment, I think that the smartest thing I can do is this. Move this enemy over there. Shoot one more time over here. And move back. There we are. Right. Mars 06. I've never heard of Obsidian, and you are the second person in the week to mention it. <laughs> yeah, you know... It's crazy how that sometimes happens, isn't it? Um, Snurky, before our current system, we used Obsidian with Live Sync and Kanban. Did do not do that with more than three people. Yeah, I can, I can, I, I, I agree, I agree. Especially when you are trying to use Obsidian as a real-time collaboration software, right? Regardless of what you're collaborating on, I don't think that ever works out well. But then again. Maybe some people have pulled that off. What do I know? Anyways, let me also try playing with lowered opacity. Oh, I really like this, by the way. A lot of settings, but they're, but they're good. This is good. Oh, reset tutorials. I need to add that string there. Right, accessibility, um, background objects, god mode, grid visibility. Let's bring it down to 61% just because, just because we can. Okay, lovely. It's actually pretty good. Right. Um, uh this is, these guys are not making this easy for me, are they? So, one health point, but it's easier to move that guy, right? So I don't want to do that. Oh, I really don't want to be doing that. I could do that, but... Eh. Nah, let's just do this. And move forward. Not enough AP. Yeah, yeah. I gotcha. Um... Mars 06, I'm using it for just myself. I'm going to use OneDrive to have access and multiple computers. Yeah, yeah, that definitely works out. It's Zoids. I love Obsidian. I use it for my personal use. Writing down recipes or game ideas or even builds info for games I'm currently playing. That is awesome. Would you mind sharing the theme you are using? It looks so clean I've gotten bored of my current theme and want it something more darker. Absolutely. Let me do that right away, actually. Mm -hmm. Settings. Settings, appearance, dark, blue, topaz. Blue, topaz. Blue as in the color and topaz as in topaz. <laughs> T-O-P-A-Z. Um, it should be available on the theme library, on the official one. Uh, turning this into an Obsidian stream. It just, it just goes to show how some software is objectively great. Just like Godot. Right. Uh, how do we do this? My goodness. Well, in order to be able to hit that guy, I can do this. Metal panels to get shields. And then, and then start shooting at the van. But I only have five more turns until the auto victory, which is, which is not much. Which is, which is not much. Okay. Ah, why? All right, carpet short. Power two, awesome, awesome, but three, really? Yeah, all right, it's going to work out. It's going to work out because I've got metal panels so I can protect my passenger wagon. Uh, I, I should work out. Um, Zinurki. Um, it's a... Uh, it's always thanks a hidden gem, the gem. <laughs> you know, okay, Obsidian is a really powerful tool for a Godot dev. Yeah, it is. It is. And you know, especially, I don't know how many of you are working solo. I am not, but I, I've tried this and it works really well. The moment you're working solo, you can experiment very quickly with what works for you. Now, of course, the moment you've got a team going on, you have to make sure that you're implementing ideas for workflow that work for 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 everyone for the entire team, but but if you're if you're solo, you can just try things out very quickly. Right, Zinoki, I just realized this is the first time a stream pronounces my 
name right first try. Well, what can I say? No, <laughs> I think that the reason is, by the way, um, I think the reason is that when I was around 16, 15 years old, I made up a name for myself and, you know, in the online space that was called Zerenda. Um, Zerenda. And it was with an X at the beginning. And, I, and, and around that time, I, I realized that that's a, a plausible or rather probable pronunciation. But anyways, I'm super, I'm super glad I, I got it right. It doesn't always happen, right? It's pretty rare. Um, right. I am liking this. Because this means I can do a carpet shot here. Fantastic. And... Ooh, that's not going to work out. But I don't want to take a damage, so let's move, move away. Alright. I can work with this. I think. Hand throw, carpet shot. Let's just do, let's just do carpet shot. Nice. Yeah, there's a bit of a side of the world that, that can be seen on the, on, on the side. Anyways, because I destroyed the module van, now I can activate an extra module. There's get one extra AP if no damage received last enemy turn. Get three extra AP when a wagon is destroyed. Get 20% cash reward bonus. Um, I'll do get one extra AP if no damage received last enemy turn. I'll do that one. Now we can go into Chop Shop or Fight. Ah, oh, right. I don't have any upgrade points, which means I'm going to go into a fight. Right. Um, how did you come up with your names, Nurki, by the way? And uh, Geek and Geek and Gale. Geek and Gale. Cool. If you're solo, you reply, I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> right. Let's move away from there. That looks dangerous. Move to... Oh, we can shoot here, I think. I think this is going to work out. And we can shoot there one more time. Yes. And I got a little tag the other one. Lovely. That's exactly what I wanted to do. Right. Mm. Oh, yeah. Got, got hit. Got hit. Okay, that's good. Oh, carpet shot. Fantastic. Uh, Zinurkin, the, the history of my name is, is pretty wild. All right, peeps, it's time for a bit of a story. I made up a name by spamming my keyboard. <laughs> uh, making Zinurg, eventually twisting it, twisting it into Zinurgy, until someone felt like spelling my name funny, and now it's Zinurki. Uh, 2013 to 2015. Yeah, I, I know how this goes. You know, my main email address is still is still an email address that I uh, that uses the alias that I made when I was th 13 years old or something like that. Um, and of course, I've I've got, I've got forwarded email addresses so that I don't need to be showing this one to uh, potential business partners, to people that are working with me or whatnot, because it looks super silly. Uh, but yeah, it's just some of these old aliases are just are just going to be around with us forever. <laughs> Hand throw? Sure. No. What do I do? Uh, metal panels. Hand throw. Ooh. Ah, I was hoping that I'd, I'd, I'd keep a bit of AP, but no. Right. This guy's just not making it easy, is he? But anyways. Awesome. Nice. This was what? Third fight? I think this was third fight. So that's good. Upgrade point and depot. I should be applying those upgrade points because I need extra health for the boss. So let's do that. Um, train repair. I like that. All right. What mission do I want to do? Destroy 10 enemies? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Ten enemies are great. Harpoon? I love Harpoon. Lovely. So, Harpoon. What do we have here? We have Harpoon, Harpoon, by Move it closer. Move it closer by one cell. That's good. Deal one damage. Move the unit away. This is going to work really well with my artillery. Bring enemy closer by one cell. 
That's fine. Deal one damage to target and move it closer by one cell. Bring an enemy closer by one cell. Stun. Ah, it's got stun. Oh, definitely picking that one then. Um, I also want to upgrade my locomotive because I need the health. Okay, draw. Lovely. Okay. Let's go move on. But right. Um, TFW. The forward wishing. I'm not sure what, what, what TFW is. Um, I was going to stream game dev myself, but unfortunately my grain dictated my fade. Uh, watch this stream instead. Well, it's not that much of a, you know, article of bad news then. <laughs> because you're here. But no, I hope the migraine goes away quickly. I think anyone who's ever been through a migraine knows just how painful that gets. So I, I, I really hope that works out well and, 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 and leaves soon. Um, MIFF, MIFF. Project. So yeah, this project is for Pierce. So it's a it's a roguelike deck builder where you're building a train to build your deck. We don't have a Steam page yet. The only thing we do have is that you can subscribe to a newsletter, which I put together last week because I knew that I was going to be streaming, but I didn't. I knew also that we wouldn't have a Steam page, unfortunately. Um, but basically, if you do decide to go for the newsletter, there will be no other emails apart from. There's a Steam page, there's a demo, the game's been released, there's a new update. <laughs> and yeah, of course, you can always unsubscribe anytime. Uh, the face went, oh, TFW means the face went. Gotcha, gotcha. Uh, that I use with very, very little meaning nowadays. Zanurki, uh, um, this is a Steam Deck game, if I've ever seen one. I completely agree, I completely agree. We've also got controls. Uh, so, for example, with the bumper con uh, buttons, you you change cards that you've got selected. And then with the D-pad or on keyboard, WASD, you choose where you want to use that card, right? The grid also shows everything that is meant to be showing. Um, and, um, yeah, and of course, you can... You can go from one to another, anchor down. Yep, yep. Oh, it actually works super well. That is awesome. Right. Uh, where were we? There was something else I wanted to read up on. Someone said something interesting. Uh, the Engel bit of my name is a misspelling of a German word for angel. Aha, uh -huh, Engel. Um, this is intentional as I am no angel. <laughs> That's actually super cool. Lovely. Lovely story with that one, by the way. Love it. Uh, Zinurka, migraine is the worst. I can usually withstand other pain and illness and keep doing what I usually do, but migraine just stuns me. It does. It does. I remember getting up from bed once, thinking, oh, today's going to be a lovely day. And then I just got up. And I just... I, 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 I fell right back into my bed. It lasted for a couple of days as well. All right, so we got to destroy 10 enemies. And... Oh, my goodness. What a crap hand. Like... Crap hand, really? Seriously, super crab. Uh, okay. <laughs> Bring enemy closer. Well, we could stun them, I suppose. So, I've already moved once, really? I have? Well, but why? I certainly didn't mean to. Oh. I don't want to be stunning them, though, do I? Well, no, it could still be useful. All right, so I've got four. Metal panels is one. No, I'm going to sacrifice my ability to deal damage this turn. Move forward. Get metal panels. Just so that I don't lose any health points, and that's all I can do. Right. Right, in the meantime. Um, Geek and Gale. We're whales on the moon, we carry our harpoon, but there ain't no whales. So we tell all tales and sing our whaling tune. Really nice. Is that from a thing, or did you just make that up? Because if you did, it's awesome. Even if you didn't, it's awesome, of course. All right, so I, I'm, I'm liking this. I can do three, six. Oh, all of this is going to work out. So I can do carpet shot there. Artillery attack there. And then 
Everyone, take a deep breath, because this moment is going to rock. Oh, so cool. So cool, but I'm going to get one damage dealt, unfortunately. Anyways, uh, future armor. Right, Giga Girl. Future armor then. Nice. Okay, artillery. Okay. Destroying them. AP up. Ah, oh, I didn't notice it was an AP up. AP up means that every time AP up increases AP cost each time a card is played. Right, I could I could move them closer, but I really don't need to. Right, um, I don't think I could do anything smart with that one. So let's just draw a new hand. Ah, oh, fantastic! Right, so we got three, which means I can deal damn. Oh, carpet shot. Yes. Um, sen sentry bot then self-sufficient. Aha! Aha, we have been protected from spam. Thank you so much. That's awesome. Um, Alright, we're going into a boss stage. But anyways, uh, I must say, this is the first time I've played with a longer, thinner grid. Uh, I mean, thinner. The, the width of the grid is roughly the same that it's been. Uh, however, it's longer, so there's more space for the train to be going forward and backward, and I'm quite liking it. It feels like there's a lot more space that I can be making use of, which is really nice. Uh, Solar Labyrinth, it's so fast we can't compete. <laughs> yeah, but maybe there's a human behind there, right? Maybe there's a human behind that veil of a bot, um, and they're just, they're just checking those messages so fast. All right, so this enemy is the boss, right? Let's zoom in on them. First of all, how good does this look? That's awesome. Just, just wow. Just wow. That's awesome. Anyways, um, yeah, so, so this is a, a boss enemy with a cannon. Very powerful. This one's got a bit of a less of a cannon, but still kind of annoying. But, but this, but this guy, mm-mm, very annoying. All right. So if my suspicion is correct, I'll be able to just move forward. Ah, I've got to do hand throw. Artillery. Well, all right. Let's hope I survive this, by the way. Um, I can move forward. Oh no. Can I play it twice? Oh, I can't. Oh no. Uh, deals at least two damage. I, 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 think, I think this boss deals three damage, actually. It's the maximum it can. Alright, but I can't lose another health point there. I can there. I could there. But anyways, okay, let's do this. Right. Now, he goes first, of course. Of course. And I can't do anything else. Nope, that's it for me. Let's see whether we can win this. Ugh. Ugh. That was painful. I am, I am not winning this one. At least not very easily. Oh, no. What do I do? How do I get out of this? Oh. Oh. That's useful. That could work. Relatively well. Okay. But... Well, I would I would die if I stay here, right? I can't I can't use anything. I can't move them in. So the only thing I can do is just move back by one, which means they'll destroy my only combat wagon. Oh no, this is terrible. Ooh, oh no, and that made me lose my harpoon as well. Ah, I felt that in my bones. That was difficult to watch. I don't know about you peeps, but if there was anyone that withstood all of this and 
and managed to keep looking the entire time. I have massive respect for you. That was hard. I just lost my entire train. I don't think there's anything more that I can do. Deck. Yeah, I don't have any other combat cards, which is difficult. All right. There we go. The train cars that I had when I finished was a destroyed chassis and a passenger wagon. And I played for 21 minutes. First map, 21 minutes. But I did a lot of talking. All right, let's be honest. I was a bit chatty back then. So, all good. All good, I think. I think that's all good. Right, set, reset tutorials. All right, save and exit. Um, let's put that into the strings. Right. Set, reset tutorials. Oh, I've got it here. That's good. So we're just going to project settings, generate POT. Yep. Yep. All right. Oh, I did. Here we go. Translation, update from a POT. Fantastic. All right. Flip mouse buttons. Nope. Reset tutorials. Um, no. Let's call it show tutorials again. And with that there, we just need to put it into... Let's keep the button space there. Um, let's just... Actually, no, this is a good place for it. This is a very good place for it. Good. So, settings, yeah, show tutorials again. Lovely, lovely. That can 100% that can stay there exactly that way. And that's going to work really well. Um... V-Sync, Debanding, FXAA. Maybe I could do something like anti-aliasing. Um, is that is that how you pronounce it? Anti-aliasing. Anti... Anti or anti? Anyways. Anyways. I, I, I could perhaps make a section for anti-aliasing. Um, ambient occlusion. This all feels so fucked up. But anyways. All good. Um, also, another thing that I want to do in this gooey settings thing... There is the separator, and there's a control over here. And I just want to show it so that we get a bit more space, and the pop-up breathes a little bit. Uh, Zinurki, anti aliasing <laughs> I, I know, it sounds silly when I say it out loud, but pretty good. What can I say? All right, is it just me, or... Oh, okay. Too much. Too much. There we go. So just so that it's centered like that. That's good. anti leasing Or anti leasing No, it's probably going to be anti leasing Alright, alright, alright. Yeah, yeah, I can get behind on that. But if anyone has, a, has an alternate idea, let me know. <laughs> alright. Now I think it's time to get into the colors of things. Oh, God. My goodness. Right. So how how do we how how do we how how do I do this? Elias. Even I got lost. Like Elias. So Eliasing. Right, right. So not Aliasing. Aliasing, but Elias. Eliasing. Anti Eliasing. Really? Anti Eliasing. That is interesting. I mean, it kind of rolls off the tongue. But also, I, I sort of feel like since I'm making a game or games, um, I should know. But I have no idea. <laughs> okay. Um, Elias is alias. Alias. Oh. Oh. Right. Right. I'm completely lost now. So, all good. <laughs> Uh, set game, set window. Why do we have window hard-coded in there, by the way? That's wrong. That's very wrong. No. Set window. Good. Let's go into our base locales. I don't think we have set window, do we? No. No. So let's do that. Const, set window, string window 
very straightforward. Project export, no, not export. I don't want to be exporting it. Uh, POT generation, Let's generate the POT. Good. Uh, open it in Po Edit. That's good. Bring it up in here. Update from POT file. Okay, window. Window saved. All good. Should be translated now. Um, alias. 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 What's your What's your alias? What's your alias? Aliases or aliases. Wow. You know how you sometimes get that thing that you're saying a word you've said thousands of times, but then you sort of start thinking to yourself that that word probably doesn't even exist. And I know that there's a word for this as well. Uh, but I am I am sort of going through that emotion right now, real time. <laughs> Alright. I'd probably say aliases. I'm not sure why. Anyways. Um... We have that. So let's push this. GUI settings, game, grid size 5.8. Yeah, sure. We'll put that in there. All right. Add more translation strings. Game. Change. Grid size to 5.8. Um, Geek and Girl. Honestly, it doesn't matter too much. All words are made up anyways. Which, yeah, they are made up, aren't they? Aren't they? I mean, when it comes to languages, sometimes you can you can sort of see how the language is developed by seeing where they put the most variety or complexity. And clearly, as they were being developed and being actively made up, that's where the people that were using those languages thought the languages deserved deserved extra care. Uh, Zinoki, I was writing some gun code, and for the life of me, I couldn't understand what felt wrong with the spelling. Um, Zinoki, I had that happen with the word clip, I think. Right, right, I gotcha, I gotcha. <laughs> okay, so peeps, how do we go about allowing the player to change the colors? Uh, Geek and Gale. You know you can't trust quarks. They make up everything. Oh, quarks. That's got to do with quantum physics, doesn't it? Doesn't it? I think it does. I might be wrong, though. But I think it does. <laughs> Alright, views. This thing has... I, I, I would prefer having a bit more space from the sides like that. I think, I think that's good. 90 and 90. You know, shadows are super powerful now that I think about it. Right, this is a panel container. Of course it's a panel container. But if we were to add a texture rectangle to right around here, this is something that I always enjoy doing. Yeah, okay, never mind. This is just a quick test. No need to go so far. Anyways, texture rectangle, let's delete that. Save this. Do we have anything new? We do. What is it? Right, okay. Change, increase margin size on both sides of the settings panel. There we go. Right. Um, out frost. Elias. Alias. Anti alias. Alias aliases least ales. What is happening? <laughs> All right. Yeah, so the colors. Right, so we basically... Basically, the, mo the two most important colors are... Let's take a look at the colors. Right, so we basically have two most important colors. There is the color of good and the color of danger which are extremely important when you're trying to read anything off of the grid. So, when I am here, right, see that red? That red should be customizable. See the red on the HP bar? That red should also be customizable. This is not that much of an issue, but... But it is. I mean, it's not, but it is. 
not that much, but quite a fair bit, you know? So... So how do we name them? All right, because it's not just HB bar color, but it's sort of um, the, the good color and the color of the bad. At the moment, that's red and red, but I prefer... Yeah, it's all red, right? Everything bad is red. And it's important to be able to see this, because here you can see where the enemy is going to go. And you can see where the enemy could go and where they could shoot. No, j there is no going. Okay, so you can just see where they can shoot, what, what the maximum range of their shooting is. Here you can see that this enemy, for instance, can't attack diagonally, just in the cardinal, dire uh, cardinal directions. Very important, very important piece of information for the player. Uh, Geek and Guild, benefit and detriment. Why can't we just call them the good color and the bad color? Wouldn't that just solve everything? I mean, sure, it's a bit on the nose, but <laughs> it's a bit it's a bit obvious, right? It's a bit yeah, they could have spent five more minutes brainstorming the color names. But um, you know, the good color and the bad color. Because benefit and detriment, although that they are, although those are both much better names. The thing about benefit color is, what are the things that benefit you? So, to me, it still feels like the good color is actually, you know, um, uh, more appropriate. Positive, negative information color. Oh, wait, wait, wait! Villainous shade of of badness. Villainous shade of badness. Villainous shade of badness. That's pretty good. Command not found. And then we have uh, positive information color. I think that's good. Heroic shade of goodness. We're really getting somewhere right now. Um, health and targeting color. Yeah, but it's not just targeting color, because that color w is also the color of where you, where that is, is the attack range. It's the range, not just, hmm. It is really close, though. Really close. What else do we have? Uh, villainous Shade of Badness. Love that one. That is brilliant. Benefit of that. Benefit that. Remember. But positive negative information color, that's pretty good. That's pretty. <laughs> All right. The choice has been made. It's going to be the positive and negative information color. All right. So, const set positive information color string positive information color const set negative information color string negative information color all right zinoki i'm now reminded um reminded my previous job was literally just wording things <laughs> that's very good oh also also i don't know about I don't know how many people know about this, because I never knew that this is still a, a thing that you can do. But this is a mouse, right? This, oh no, this mouse over here is a trackball mouse, where you've got this, this ball over here that you control with your thumb. And that's basically the mouse. A massive advantage of this mouse is that you do not need to move your arm at all. The only thing you move is just your thumb, right? And it's fantastic, it's fantastic. Um, anyways, uh, out frost. If I see that for the first time, something like health and targeting is more intuitive to me than negative information with the with the latter. I'm like in a journal. Yeah, no. I mean, I mean, I, I understand. Frost, 
health and targeting. So in the back end, it's going to be called the positive information color and the negative information color, 100%, right? That's just, that's just how it is. However, on the front end, like, I'm like in a journal, well, it could be in a journal, but uh, it is true that health and targeting do sort of work very well. Ah, Geek and Gale. I mean, the tooltip solves that problem. Yeah, but ideally, no tooltip is necessary because that way I I can I can work less. <laughs> I can spend that time doing other things. Uh, at first, but I've not been paying great attention, so I might be wrong. Well, no, nah, I mean, I think I think you get the general gist of things. Anyways, for now, I'm going to keep it positive information color, and then in order to change it, because this is all just a translated string at this point. As you can see, I'm already keeping it uh, translated all the time, so the backend is going to be this, and then we can change it anytime. Uh, Zinurki, same information in smaller form is always better. Yeah. Well, it could just be positive color and negative color, right? It could just be those two, could it not? I think, I think it's valid. <laughs> All right. Anyways, um, uh, let's go into settings and accessibility. All right. So var, um, positive information color. That's a color. And that's a color, right? Var, negative information, color. That's a color, and that's a color. All right. Um, so, a, a, as I said, the the back end, the, the name of the variables is going to be this, positive and, and negative information color. Um, it's all being translated through uh, the PO edit editor, as you can see over here. Right, so so the strings that actually show up in the game are the ones taken from here. Um, yeah, so all good, all good, right, all good. Very easy to change, just a couple of clicks, and it'll it'll be there very quickly. I'm also super happy with this translation workflow because with the with the with the POT files, it really feels like the source of truth for the translations comes from the game. And I really like that. Before, when I was working with um, with uh, with CSV, or rather I was using uh, Google Docs, I always felt a bit of a disconnect where I wasn't taking the data from the game, I was just dragging inspiration from the game and then putting that into the sheet. But now when I generate a POT file, it all gets generated from a file in the game. Right. Uh, Outfrost, yeah, it's valid. Uh, Zinurki, positive information color, negative information color. Really? Re really? Nah. Nah, it's all color and color. The, the, the both with a U. <laughs> like health and health. Like losing health and being targeted and range. I did the discrepancy on purpose. Ugh. You evil being. <laughs> how, how, how could you? That's evil. That is super evil. All right, wait, how much time do we have? It's four. Four start out, three, three, four. Okay, good, good, good. Um, Zinurki, I have clip size and ammo in magazine as comment. <laughs> That's actually really cool. I'm pretty sure that every time you discover that line of code, you think to yourself, yeah, good decisions were made. <laughs> All right. Uh, okay. Okay. So, health bar, TSCN. All right. Health point on, health point danger. So now I have the color, no, you. Okay, so this is the default color for good. And this is the default color for bad. 
Okay, good. Dr. Revert. <laughs> Dr. Revert has come to inform us that perhaps that string should be reverted. Hello, Dr. Revert. Welcome to the chat. Uh, okay, just to mess with people reading code or decompiling it. Yeah, I mean, that's super legit, by the way. Dr. Revert, clip can also mean to cut a part of something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And can you imagine if you had a gun that also had a knife and you were using... You were using clip interchangeably, or using a word that could be used for both, but you weren't sure that it was. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Incredible. Okay. So, we have these colors. Yeah. Why is the shield damage color different from the health point danger? Color. Makes no sense. We'll see about the code of that. At Frost, Crou Crouch Strike did not have Dr. Revert support on Thursday, unfortunately. I think that would have really helped them. <laughs> right. Okay. So here. Uh, we do this and this and this. Right. And then we say equals config get value. Accessibility section. Oh, I love multi-cursor editing. Uh, f into there, we need to grab this. Put that in there. And the amount is going to be the color. Yeah, multi-line editing is the best. Okay. What's the, what's the, what's the issue? Ah, right. Right, 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 right. That makes sense. Here we are. Okay. Good stuff. So this is loading. No, this is, yeah, this is loading. Now we need the saving as well. Let's just bring that in here. Uh, uh, yep. We just do this. We do this. And we do that. Okay. So, now we got loading and saving. Exciting, right? And those colors are going to be the same as these. Um, health bar. Whenever. Right, so in health bar, we'll say... On ready, we'll say update colors. And we'll also say game manager settings settings changed connect and we connect it to update colors and then the function for update colors is just right it's going to be very straightforward right so health point on equals game manager settings uh what was it <laughs> positive information color right and then health point danger is negative information color shield color i, I don't think i'm even using that one by the way oh i am oh my goodness oh no that's the icon Okay, and then there's shield damage color, shield icon modulate. I'm not even using that one. That's good. That's very good. Okay, so now we've got, uh, we always update the colors, and whenever the settings get changed, the health bar goes back and updates the colors again. Let me just make sure that um, this is set up correctly. So, settings changed, health bar, settings changed. Lovely. All right. Now that we're here. There's another, there's another thing that we want to do. The other thing is the prepared attack, right? So, the class is called prepared attack. It's this one, right? We all know this one. Don't worry. Um, 
strong and color weak. No way. You can't be doing this to me. Can you? Oh, Ooh, this is disgusting. Uh, uh. All right. Right. So, no, not that. Uh, Pure Photon. Hello. Welcome. Welcome. And thank you for checking out the project. If, by the way, if there's anyone who has no idea what game I'm working on, just let me know. No issues. I'll show you right away. I'm, I'm, I'm curious if there's any neutral messages. Yes, there are, but that's always with a high contrast. So, white on a high contrast background. So, I don't think I'll want to be doing that. Uh, Pure Photon, I have, no, I have no clue what you're working on. Thank you very much for telling me. Very important. So, let's go ahead and do this. Uh, we can also test whether... Um, get value in base config file. What? Config? Ah, right. Right. Right, okay, so peeps, you have questions, and probably it is me who should have the answers. So let's take a look. Right, um, so Pure Photon and Mysterious. Um, are you working on accessibility features for this game? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's what's going on. So I've got these settings uh, where, where we've got general settings, accessibility settings, audio and graphics. Accessibility settings are the ones that I'm putting in now. Um, ah, right. Right, very good. And this should be set value oh no i messed up big time anyways it should work now so i'm working on the accessibility settings right so we can save that and turn that off and the game all right so if, if there's anyone watching lurking uh whatever have you and you haven't seen the game yet this is the game it's an action no it's not an action <laughs> the first word i say about the game is wrong it, it it's a it's a game where you build your train and by building your train, you build your deck of cards, which you use in combat on a grid in a turn-based strategy manner. So, for example, I can choose my starting uh, train carriage. So let's go with, let's just, yeah, let's just go with that one. That one's good. Let's change our driver. So at the very beginning, you can choose your locomotive, your driver, and your carriage. Uh, Gig and Girl, deck builder and tactics. Yeah, sort of. It's a it's a deck builder, but the important thing about tactics, because every nearly every deck builder is going to involve tactics, right? Because you can be counting how many cards you have in your deck, how many are there in your graveyard, um, what what cards are you more likely to be getting if you use this card to take two more cards from your deck and whatnot. So there's always there's always tactics, but here it, it very much focuses on the deck building tactics and also combat positioning tactics really drawing on the inspiration from Into the Bridge. Right, so, for example, this is the information panel for my wagon. I can see what active cards I have and what other cards I could activate. When I level this wagon up, I need to fix this as well, um, I, get, I get a choice of two cards and I need to choose just one. So here I'll go with Incendiary Blast. That one's fantastic, by the way. And we can go into a fight. Um, yeah, let's let's fight. Mysterious. I like the look of this. That is good news. Very good news. <laughs> yeah. So uh, to give you a bit more information about this genre, right? So there's deck building, and then there's this fight on a grid. The best game I've ever played that had done fighting on a grid in a turn-based manner, in a way where you can you can make the positioning really matter, was Into the Bridge. So one of the first design decisions when we decided that this game was going to be turn-based was to get inspired by Into the Bridge, and we did. Now I can, for example, right, I can move forward or back, but I need to spend my um, AP points, action points. Um, and I've got artillery attack, Frostbite Arrow and Incendiary Blast. I'll go ahead with, first of all, Artillery Attack, uh, cost of two, and if I shoot here, it would move the enemy uh, in the direction of that arrow. I can also 
shoot from here that would move those two enemies in the respective directions of those arrows again uh, but that's not the best play the best play is this check this out now this enemy will shoot his friend doing my job without me having to do my job that's fantastic right how to turn friends into enemies <laughs> that's not the point of this game please do not take this out of context um and yeah Right, so I've got Powerful, more AP, fantastic. I've also got Frostbite Arrow, super dangerous, but very useful. And then we've got Incendiary Blast. I think I'll do that. Lovely. That enemy is on fire, and um, the fire will deal damage at the end of next turn. But in the meantime, he will have had enough time to shoot at his friend, I hope. Anyways, let's take it. Let's, let's take a look. Yes, dealt damage, received damage from the fire, right? And then and then this one only has one life point left, where I can shoot a frostbite arrow, right? So the drivers are a bit special, right? Of course, the driver is in the locomotive, and the driver is a bit special. The driver always is, right? So, um, so the drivers have mysterious powers. The driver I'm with now is called Monica Coltsnap. Her nickname is called Snap. She was born into a family of ice harvesters. Monica discovered she could control the cold itself. She travels the railway, searching for a way to understand her powers. <laughs> so she shoots uh, frost arrows. Kaboom. Lovely. Right, so the fight is over. We get our rewards and we receive an upgrade point. Uh, pure photons. The game looks well polished. Have you got a Steam wish list set up or just a mailing list? Yeah, we don't have a Steam page, so it's just a mailing list for now. I've also mentioned this a couple of times, but the only reason we have the mailing list is because we haven't got a Steam page yet. Uh, we, we are tight for time when it comes to setting it up, of course. It needs to be, you know... Uh, it, 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 it's just too many things happening at the same time now. Um, some of which are recommended to be done without a Steam page. Um, so we'll see how it all pans out. You know how life goes. Sometimes the decisions are good, and sometimes they are not good at all. And, um, yeah. And so, yeah, the mailing list is there just so that we can send out the announcement of uh, Steam page demo release and update, right? Anyways, Convoy Depot. Uh, we can go into a depot, right? This is the other interesting part of the game, where um, once you've battled through the bandits you can come down to a depot where you get to either remove a card or repair your train choose a mission i'm going to choose a mission to deliver a cargo and you can also buy new train cars which is i think exciting right so yeah um and i'll <laughs> all dente al dente uh, nice, and also, your project is always on track, so that's great. Yeah, when when the project stops being on track, something is wrong. <laughs> that's awesome, that's awesome. Oof, yeah, this is, this is, this, this is a difficult set of wagons to be looking after. <sighs> Here we are. Do upgrade points. Right. Ah, one really cool thing about the upgrade points. Check it out. So, here. Right? That's the passenger wagon or coach, train coach. Every time I, every time you upgrade any of the wagons, their visuals change. So, <laughs> one more. One more deck. And another deck. Damn. That's a lot of people that that one can deliver. Right? Oh, I love this effect as well. It's always trying to look at the wrong direction to make you angry. <laughs> and it does that really well. All right. Let's go back to main menu. Exit out of there. And, um, yeah. Also, um, Mysterious. Very clever game. Good job. Thank you so much. Means a lot. Now then, I am going on a quick break again. And then we're going to implement those colors. I'll, I'll go on a break thinking about where to put the source data for those colors. Maybe in the UI, but that's kind of... Uh, you know sad i think it's a bit sad isn't it i think it is a little sad 
and uh, uh, mysterious. Also, as a UI developer, the UI looks very polished and well done too. You have no idea how happy you just made me, by the way. As a UI developer, what? That's awesome. Thank you so much. Um, it took me multiple iterations, multiple sketches, and just really, at times, banging, banging my face against the tabletop until I got some of those things to a state that I was happy with. Um, and also, also tips and tricks from my friends who are much better at UI than I am. <laughs> so yeah. All right, peeps, I'm going to turn off the Be Right Back uh, group of things, which are going to be cycling through videos of the game and various things that have happened. Nightbot, game developer, design programming, are there, Matt? Cookies. Ah, right, yeah, that's that's me. Uh, Conjiv, um, if you're curious about anything, feel free to stick around and ask me when I get back. Also regarding the project, all good, all good. My name's Christoph. And I'll be right back. So, in the meantime, peeps. Um, in the meantime.
right, I'm back. This time I won't forget to turn off the BRB text and videos. Right. Um, here we here we go. Here we go. I, I actually had a really good idea how to do this. So in the settings menu, accessibility settings, we use base. No, we add an item, which is setting item base. Setting item base, right? 2D, 2D. I want to see it, but this is going to be um, positive UI color. Negative UI color. Grab the string from here. No, that's negative. That's that's positive, right? This is going to be negative. Setting string in file. That one in settings over here is positive information color. Again, the other way around. So negative. We just need to change this to negative. All right. So. This is not a bool, this is just what it's meant to be setting. So, by default, positive is going to be uh, Geek and Gale. So I just learned a new thing about Twitch. If you have the at in the stream title thingy, the person it links to will pop up and you can click follow easily. Yeah, I had a, I had a quick chat before the stream with Nat and she told me about this and I was like, uh, I, I, I had to think about it for a little bit and then it, it just felt genius. Just really cool to have that in there. Especially when you've got guests on your on your on your stream account, right? Right, so this one is going to be color green. Now we need colors, right? So colors const color green and that's a string and it's just going to be green let's get a couple of colors in here right and then we do blue red orange yellow purple artist synth well hello there great seeing you here great seeing you here Right, we'll say blue, red, orange, yellow, yellow, purple. All right, and now that's how many elements we add as well. Right, so we got green, and then we'll allow it to be blue, red, Orange, yellow, purple. All right, here we are. Nearly there, nearly there. We want this to be a color. We want this to be a color. We want this to be a color. Ooh, where, where are you, color, color? Here you are. Right, five elements. All right. So we'll make this a color as well. We'll make this a color. And we'll make this a color. All right. The order of these doesn't matter, which is good. Because uh, the way I've written the UI element is that it checks for whether the same one that it already has has been applied. And if so, then, um, then, then it sets it to the appropriate one. So we just need to get these colors right, and then we can play around with the other colors. If my theory is correct. <laughs> right, so, boom. Boom. Oh, no. There we go. All right. Uh, oh, wait, that's blue. Right, so this is red. Yes. Now we make it blue. Orange. It's a bit, 
It's a bit too yellow, isn't it? Uh, next one is yellow. And then we have purple. All right. All right. So we have these colors. Um, I'm not sure this is going to work. Not certain. Kick and Gale, no indigo. No, I'll, I'll just go for these basic colors, right? So red, green, and blue. Red, green, and blue are are the most important, and then and then these. Um, <laughs> yeah. These should be translated automatically because it gets applied on a label, right? And it's not a slider. It's going to be a multiple option uh, thing, which automatically generates all of the necessary elements according to how many options there are here and then it chooses this as the values right so i should be able uh, i i i don't even know whether there's a, a a simpler way of doing this i i should be able to duplicate this however there seems to be a bug in this specific version of godot where duplicating an instanced scene doesn't exactly play play well with uh, some references that these scenes have. So I'm just going to copy-paste these. Almost there. Almost there. Ideally, I'd only ever need to set this up once. Do I have orange? Yes, I do. Okay. And this is purple. Alright. And then these. So this is going to be color. Color. Let's add five of those. Color. 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 And color. My god. When I want to change these colors, this is going to be a massive pain. Oh well. You win some, you lose some. Right? All right. All right. Nearly there. Ne nearly, nearly there. Right. Uh, that was right. So, Geek and Girl, that was a joke because of Mr. Newton. I actually do not understand the reference. But I'm pretty sure it's pretty wide, widespread, as in uh, universally understood. <laughs> Anyways, let's see what this does. Yes! Yes, it works. It works. Now, what I'm thinking of doing now is... Uh, adding a UI element that would grab the active value from this and show it somewhere on the UI element, right? Because, because this is going to be super important. We do want to be able to see the colors that we're choosing. Right. Uh, Newton is the guy that discovered that light can be split into colors. Ah. Um, he was also obsessed with the number seven, which is why indigo was separated from purple and violet. Interesting. Interesting. Space Diver 256, the UI is so neat. <laughs> yeah, yeah uh, also just a moment ago, there was another person saying that they really enjoy the UI, and I, I, am, I couldn't be happier, really. Thank you very much for saying that. And Newton and indigo, I see. And was indigo the seventh color then? <laughs> All right, so what I want to be able to do here, let's turn on the accessibility settings. All right. So we can we can see the accessibility settings. And now, what is this? Um, oh no. Is this like a, uh, how is this set up? Panel container. Why does it need to be a panel container? Anyways, if we, <laughs> if we add a texture rectangle, which is going to be a gradient, right? 
Gradient. Oh, of course, purple. Why, why are you purple? Is there a... Why, why, are you sure you want to be purple? I don't think you want to be purple, do you? Um, fit width, maybe. How does this work? Right, right, right. Okay. Ah, fantastic. Okay, not purple. Nope. It's just the other way around. Okay, so we want to go from white to white transparent. And ideally, not yellow. <laughs> ideally, not yellow. I mean, yeah, it's fine, but I'd really appreciate it if it didn't, ha didn't need to be yellow. So let's do this. Do that on self modulate, which clearly doesn't need, even need to be there. Visibility self modulate. And then here we can do modulate. That way we get the same effect. Um. Interesting. It's set up in a very interesting way. It's probably because of expand margin, isn't it? Yeah. All right. Anyways, so long as it works. Now, I just need to get this color somewhere where it makes sense. So, for instance, here, maybe. All right, if we just turn that around. Right, so... Here, all I would need to do is just get this modulate and change this to the color that is then picked. Um, see, see, <laughs> Conjif, Roy G B I V Indigo was sixth. Interesting. Damn, these people. So knowledgeable, by the way. Lovely. Super, super nice. Ha. Huh. What does it look like in-game again? Now, of course, now it's going to be everywhere, so that's not going to look good. Ah! It's not even visible at all. Ah! Okay. 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 I gotcha. I gotcha. So this is... This is... This, this is not right. But anyways, you know, you kind of... You kind of get where I'm going with this, right? Um... Maybe if it was just like this, right? So we could flip that around and bring it down to here, like that. Right, so so that you can clearly see the, co the color. However, this is not going to work super well with the fact that we have a yellow text on top of it. We do need to keep the contrast, right? So maybe this, right? Um, there we go. Right. Right. Now we're getting somewhere. Right. And this color would then uh, be shown according to what that color is. Yeah, I think that I think that could work. It needs to be a bit more on the nose then. Maybe it needs to be a bit more obvious. Maybe. Well, there is... Okay, okay. So, let's do it this way. Let's move it down to the label. Right. Pull rect of the label. Ah, that's the wrong label. Okay. Setting name. Right, 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 right. No worries. I, I, know, I know what I'm doing. I promise. <laughs> okay, but... We grab this, we make that a bit smaller, and we take it and bring it over there, right? So now it should always be visible. The modulation at the moment is not working because, right? Because this is not self-modulate, but it's actual modulate. Um, there we go. So setting name, again, visibility. Uh, setting modulate, fantastic. And then here, we can just put the modulation everywhere as well, so it's inherited. Lovely. And this would be color preview. 
Let's take a look. Yeah, good. Good. This is this is getting somewhere. Um, I also think that we can flip it back. Maybe bring it a bit closer. I would say it's it's too far. However, when you do select it, you do want to be able to see it. Color blue. And this is only going to be for the colors. Nowhere else. Nowhere else. All right, good. Tunnel container. And uh, let's put that there as well. Right. Um, also, before I continue working on this, it, 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 is there anyone in the chat that would want to know more about the game? <laughs> because I do understand that um, that people are coming and going, and if there's anyone interested in the actual game, let me know. Um, let me just respond to this message real quick. Okay. Right. So, let's go ahead with this. I think this will work fine. Um, oh, did I change it? No, green and red. Awesome. Okay, so now that we've got this set up, right, what I'll do in addition to all of this is settings. Um, no, even here, I'll say export bar preview color bool false. And then export var preview color control and that's going to be a texture rectangle uh, which we can put in here I believe color preview good so with this we we can say we can say that right um, if range no we don't care Update from setting. Here we have selected ID, right? Update from setting and update visuals. Update visuals is where it's at. Because here we can say if preview color, then preview color uh, control modulate equals value. Is it values? I think it's values. Yes. Values and selected ID. Yes. Only if you want to preview color. All right? Otherwise, we don't. And another thing that we want to do is all the way at the beginning, um, we'll just say that preview color control the visible equals preview color with this we should be able to come back to our settings awesome and say preview color on this one and preview color on this one okay let's see whether this works this might work right away oh it works oh <laughs> it does work does it work when i change it oh it works when i change it Fantastic. All right. All right. All right. Okay, fantastic. So this also means that it should be fairly easy to add new colors. <laughs> I'm saying fairly easy, but who who knows? Who knows? Anyways, uh, the preview works. I'm super happy about the preview working, by the way. Um, if I just head over to... Where are we? Settings button. No, not settings button. Right, right. Item base here. Right. So. Mm -hmm. 
no, maybe it would be better if it was just a square. You know, just like no transparency whatsoever. Just, just enjoy looking at that color completely. But then again, the transparency could give you an idea of if that color ever gets trans, you know, transparency applied on top of itself, what that could look like. So let's try it this way. Let's try it with the transparency on. Let me check the positioning one more time. Yes, the only thing is making it a bit small. <gasps> Why did it move? Yeah, good, good. Actually, I, I, I didn't want it to move, but it moved and I'm fine with it. That's actually super nice. <laughs> That's actually really, really nice. Okay, so yeah. And this was also the feature that I was most worried about, but I'm, I'm really happy about this because it, it, it's clearly not interfering anywhere else. Right. And there's a lot that this is doing that, 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 that the settings are now doing much better than they were doing before. So I'm super happy, really. All right, let's see whether this works at all. So this should be for good health points. Let's make it purple and bad health points are going to be yellow. <clears throat> Mac Rhymes, classic. If you're referring to the fact that sometimes you're most worried about... Interesting. Oh yes, oh yes, it does work. However, not really. <laughs> okay, but um, what was it? What, what did I say as? Yeah, okay, so that's purple. Okay, good. Let's go into a fight. Um, yeah, so if you're referring to the fact that sometimes you're most worried about something that then ends up actually being surprisingly easy, I completely agree. Completely agree. Hard agree. Oh my goodness! Even got the right color there. Oh. Why? What? That's weird. <laughs> But all right. Fantastic. Fantastic. That's the right color as well. My goodness. Whoa. I think I feel like we're going to win an award or something here with these with these options. Fantastic. Okay, anyways. So this works. Um it didn't work completely in health bar. So let's finish health bar first because there is apply new health spawn health point no that's fine tween health bar visibility no show damage no it's showing new ma max health ah here we go here we go here we go uh what what why why is it white uh, new max health point. No, okay, no. <laughs> all right, okay, okay. I, I see what's going on here. I see what's going on. All right, all right. Um, instead of doing this, what I am going to do is say that this is going to be... Right, let's create new variables for this. Var, um, pool, color, that's color, uh, game manager, settings, positive, uh, what was it called? Color orange, color red, color, color purple, ah, positive information color, positive information color. And then var uh, low color. Let's also put a comment there. So these are colors used in the animation. And finally, tween the damn values. Uh, this is going to be full color lerped to color black and lerped by 0 
But maybe it could just be color black. I mean, why not? It looked black anyway, right? So, all right. So, this is full color. Full color. And this is low color. All right. Let's check this out. It should still be purple, by the way. Oh, for some reason, there's a little bit of a green there. Why is there a little bit of a green? Interesting. Ah, right. It's because of this one. Because of this one. Low color. Okay. So with this, the health bar should be 100%. Right? 10 out of 10. 10 out of 10, no less. <laughs> Right, so we can also see the preview of that. And if we change it halfway, so we go into settings now, and I don't want you to be purple anymore. I want you to be uh, blue. Those ones do not change. Now they changed. Why did they change so late? But they do change, so that's fine. I'm quite all right with it. I don't mind them changing after a while. It kind of it kind of lets you reminisce a little bit about what just happened. So I think that's fine. <laughs> I think that's more than all right. Uh, anyways, the negative information color. Okay. So uh, next thing we need to do is head over to the prepared attack. So the prepared attack is here. Right. This is the prepared attack. This is the only other place where this information is super important. Um. <sighs> right. Animate, attack, highlight, pulsing. So it goes from color strong to color weak. Um... Color strong and color weak will no longer be exported. Yeah, but okay, I'll 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 keep it there. I'll keep. Oh no! Where did you go? All right, all right. Okay, so when we turn this on, first thing we want to do is update colors. Right. So, funk, update colors. Now. Color strong is going to equal game manager settings uh, positive information color lerb to no let's do it step by step and then color strong is going to equal color strong Lerped to color. Oh, do I want to? Uh, I don't. Mm. <laughs> How do I just lerp it? Lerp it to something more invisible. I don't think I can. Just, just lerp the alpha. Nothing else. Let's just lerp the alpha of a color, right? I don't think that works. Color operator. Uh, Coltari. Good afternoon. Um, where's Lerb? Yeah. Lightened. Well, I don't think I necessarily want to lighten it. All right, never mind. Never mind. Never mind. We'll do it in a different way then. So it's just going to be the color here. Right? And the only place where this matters... Uh, Koltari. Whoa, it's the Nodes and Biscuits guy. New episode when? Oh. Yeah, that's a, that's a tough one. Okay, so the situation is, I just don't have that time. Um, my work-life balance got much more tilted in the, on the scales over to work. So I just couldn't keep that up. And I, the situation is that I know I'm going to, um, restart the recording and publishing of episodes of Nodes and Biscuits. It's just a question of when. And yeah. So yeah, that's the situation. 
Right. Um, here we go. Right. So color strong is just going to be color strong. No. No. So instead of this... Uh, Koltari, that's fair enough. You've at least one listener waiting for you when you get round to it. Thank you so much. That's really nice. Now, in more numbers, that's 0 0.3 and 0 0.1. Okay, that's all I needed to know. 0 0.3 and 0 0.1. Okay. So, instead, we'll have a single variable called color, which is a color... Oh, wait. Oh, yeah. Right, 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 right. And in update colors, we just update color. Right. 0 0.3 and 0 0.1. That was it. 0 0.3 and 0 0.1. Right. Var color strong. Color equals color. And color weak is color and equals color as well. However, color strong um, dot a equals 0 0.3 and then color weak dot a equals 0 0.1 oof geekingale yes this is magic alright Wait, 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 wait. Ah, it was green at first, wasn't it? Weird. It really was. Okay, so now it's blue. That is a terrible... Terrible color. <laughs> that is a terrible color. Um, right. Yeah, that is a terrible color for this. Just, just, just really bad. But because this is the prepared attack, it shouldn't be the positive, but it should be the negative color for this. All right. So we've got the negative color. That's good. Um, affect itself. Affect, fo focus on. No. Focus off. Update position. New highlight. Highlights are fine. Those will be animated correctly. That's good. But then... Um... Line. Here we go. That's the line. Good. Good. How does this work? So we got the path 3D CSG polygon. Am I referencing the polygon anywhere? Of course I'm not. All right. So <laughs> that's something I'll need to reference. Export category um, line. Oh no, we already have line. Right. Export var um, line polygon, which is a CSG polygon 3D. Right? And whenever we update colors, line polygon, we can, we can assign it right away. Here we go. This is shader of the attack, right? Uh, color parameter. Color parameter. So this will work on all of them. All right. I mean, that's fine. That's fine. So when we update the colors, line polygon dot material override dot set shader param. I think that's what it was. Wasn't it? I think it was. I think it was this. Right? And that's just... Color per... Copy pro property path. Oh. Alright. And it's going to be color. Um, if my guess was correct, this is going to change the color of that. Of that. 
So material override returns a material, then we set shader override. Set material. Mm. Oh no. <laughs> set shader param. <laughs> Let's just see how this goes. We just need we just need to make sure that these colors work, right? Green. And now they go blue. Okay. So shader material, good. Set shader ah parameter. Okay, that was uh, in Godot three, I imagine. Set shader parameter, and that's going to be parameter string name value the variant. All right, and that should be for all of them, which is actually super good. That should just apply to every single attack line out there. Aha! It went from red to yellow. <laughs> okay, so this works. <sighs> this works. That's awesome. I'm so happy. I'm, I'm so happy I could cry right now. Anyways, so what we've just implemented, I don't think this will work real time, by the way. So we have set positive information color, uh, I mean negative information color and positive information color. We can change that from any, from and to any of the colors that exist. And this should really help people that do not see either of these colors well. Just so that there's enough contrast with the color that they can pick up with their eyesight. Fantastic. There's also grid visibility, god mode, gamepad vibration, and uh, Coltari. This, this game looks so cool. Super happy for you to be saying that. Thank you very much. Um, and this is probably not going to work real time. Oh. Interesting. But yeah, I, I mean, it does it does start to work, right? Eventually. Um, so let's do that now. Where are we animating it again? Here. So here it creates a tween. And it loops it over and over and over again. So, what I could do, right? Because this is, when, when I update the colors, this is already happening. Right? Uh, we update the colors afterwards, but I'll just update them right away. No, yeah, no, no, right away, right away. Another thing that we can do is we can say game manager settings settings changed connect and we create a lambda function where we do update colors and after we update colors we also animate attack highlight pulsing <gasps> but there but it needs a highlight mesh Oh no. I would need to keep a reference to all of those. Alright, so for now, we'll just update the colors. And I think that other part, because, you know, if if you find out that those colors are, but it's kind of low priority, but it would be really cool. The thing is that uh, I understand this now. Uh, the reason why I added this is because the highlight meshes. Wait. How do, how, how do they work? Um, highlights parent is added with a new highlight mesh. So theoretically, we could do for I, which is a mesh instance 3D in highlights parent, get children, right? We animate attack highlight pulsing and we pass in I. That way, that will almost work. There's a highlight tween over here. What are we using it for? Ah, it's shadowing it. Why is it shadowing it? That's weird.
Oh, right. I see. It's creating the tween on the highlight mesh. And because it's creating the tween on the highlight mesh, that's where it lives. Can I just remove tweens? Is there a way of... Right, so... So, tween, right? Create tween. New. Fails even though it's not... Is there a way of checking whether... What, or removing all of the tweens on... Get window, get viewport, get tree, get node, mul multiplayer authority. No, thank you. Get node, node path, get child fight parent. But this is tween, right? I don't. No, this is node. All right. So, tween. Let's just create tween, nothing else. Right. So, instead of that... Right, so this creates tween. Tween, tweeners, bind. So, I'm guessing that if there's bind, this would be mentioned there. Set trans, play, pause, parallel is valid. Ah, bind node. Right. Given that tweens are processed directly by the scene tree, so they run independently of the animated nodes. When you bind a node with a tween, the tween will hold the. When you bind a node with a hold the animation where the object is not inside the tree, and tween will be automatically killed when the bound object is freed. Also, tween pause bound will make the pausing behavior dependent on the bound node. For a short way to create tweens, you can just say node.create tween. Right. Okay, I see. GD script. Get all tweens on an object. Uh, check if GD script. Check if node has a tween. Is it just a child? Every time I tweet, create isolated inside a method, global array, dictionary, or class to keep track of tweens. All right, sure, sure. Let's just no worries. <laughs> we'll just do this, right? We'll just say var active tweens, which is an array of tweens. Right? And when we animate the attack highlight, every time we do this, we say for i, which is a tween in active tweens, i dot kill. So that kills the tween. And then. Here we say active tweens dot append. And I see I made an error there. I can't be doing this. Right, highlight tween, fantastic. And instead of doing this here, we will just do it in our method that gets triggered when a setting is changed. Right, it, that's already, right, right, that's fine. And we do not do that there, but we do it here. Okay, so with this, the color should actually change also when uh, when the setting changes midway through a game. Just a little bit of work. Ah, no, not just that. Um, we'll say tween kill and also active. So we kill all of them and then also active tweens dot clear. So this is the only time in place where where these colors are being where these colors are being changed. That is the only time and place. So it's all right if we clear it up. Utterly and completely. 
All right, let's get into a fight. Check this out. Let's see whether it works as one would expect. Okay, so red. Excellent. Now we jump down here and we change it to yellow. And it works. And it works. Well, now that's awesome. That is still red. Do, 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 I, but do I want to change it? <laughs> do I really want to change that? Really? Maybe I do. And the arrow is red. All right, well, never mind. That is a, that is a thing for future Kristoff. Let's just, you know, future Kristoff will deal with it. But that is, uh, that is fantastic because the most important elements do align with those new colors. So that's good. We can apply metal panels. It's going to give me full shield. It's also quiet noise how it goes from red to a different color. I'm not against it at all, actually. Okay. Destroyed. Bam. Hand throw. I should be able to get one more minigun in there. Oh, yeah. Fantastic. And stay there. Alright. Alright. Okay, let's push these changes to Git so that we keep a track of them. Um, Solar Labyrinth. Future me is great. Never complains about anything. Past me is terrible, though. Always makes so much work for me. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, li I like to think of the past me as the creative genius of the two. Okay, right. So, in addition to all of this, let's also head over to... Fantastic. Alright, so, we can, we can do those afters. Actually, I'll, at, at the very least, I'll go over here and generate the BOT file. Nice. So we can change that. And now, settings, help bar, prepare the tag, GUI settings, base locality, and there we go. Add ability to change positive and negative game colors, i.e. health and losing health. Nice. Now, all of these three, I don't, I don't, I didn't really do anything in them. Okay, right, so we got a, a clean tree working in Git. Let's push that change. You know, it's really nice when you look back at your project and you just, you just see the sheer amount of work that has gone into your game. Every time that happens, I am, I am, I am mesmerized. So cool. Every single one of those days was heaps of productivity. Uh, um, pawn, pawn x pawn, pawn pawn. Uh, hello, lovely having you here. Um, I'm a fan of Fork also. Ah, really? Fork is the best Git client, by the way. Go enjoy it. So, how much do we get on today? Can we see the sprint list for a feeling of achievement? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. So, this was done just now. We can bring that down. And the overall number of things was all of this, by the way. All of the, Damn, that's more than I thought it was going to be. <laughs> uh, damn. Yeah, yeah. It's just... Stre Some streams are productive, to say the least. Like, real productive. Anyway, it's, it's super happy with this. Some of the things that I was worried about were easier than I thought they were going to be. And other things were... 
yeah, other things I wasn't worried about, so I have nothing to compare them to. <laughs> Anyways. <sighs> Anyways. Peeps, let's take a look at someone to um, to raid. Now, just before the raiding begins, I'd like to mention again that we do not have a Steam page. <laughs> I'm not saying that as a good thing, all right? Uh, but there is the newsletter. And the newsletter... Good dough. And the newsletter is going to be used just to send you information about the fact that the Steam page has been created and released and is ready. And who are we raiding? Yeah, yeah. Oh, by the way, subscribe to the newsletter. <laughs> no, 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 no. Only if you want to. Really. This is that. Um, all right. Who do we go for? Oh, that's me. All right. All right. I was like, oh, that's familiar. It's like, it's almost as if I was looking at myself. Let's do an art pause, testing out new things, revere. No, all right, I've decided. Uh, it's also been a long time since I've watched one of Jotson's streams. So let's go for Jotson. Such a cool guy. Lovely. All right. Okay, peeps. This has been fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. I am. I'm super happy this happened. And uh, thank you all for being here. Thank you all for being here. The chat was lovely. Uh, there was one spam that we never got to see. And yeah, all good. Let's go and check out what Jolson's up to and be nice to him. He's super cool. All right. This goes up. Ah, something's happening here. <laughs> Ooh, look at that plush right there. That's nice. That's nice. It looks like he's deep in thought. Ah, there we go. Let's give that a little bit more time. Hey, Godot Engine official rating with a party of 83. Holy shit. <laughs> I mean, ooh, excuse my language. Yeah, I'm a PNG tuber today because my camera's not working.